Delta 380, contact SoCal Bridge 127.4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Airplane emojis in the chat if you guys are ready to get started. Yeah. I see we already got a few people boarding with us today. Let me get your names down. Let me get your names down. First officer today, aka the co-pilot, is going to be Sim Simiso. Our lead flight attendant is going to be Ted. Ted Station. All right, welcome aboard, my friend.
There it is. Our gate agent is going to be Don Louie. Welcome aboard, my friend. Good to see you. Make sure I didn't miss anybody. Who, uh, Aaron Marshall was FS insane? Question mark. I think I got I think I got everybody who got their tickets in advance. Okay, beautiful. All right, I see the airplane and boat is in the chat. I'm ready. You ready? We ready? Avello is ready. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back. It's your boy Blue, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim. Today we are in the PMDG 7. 37 rocking the Avello Airlines livery here in Burbank, California, Hollywood. And today we're going over to the Rogue Valley of Medford, California. That's in Northern California. If you don't know where it's at, I'll show you a little bit later. That's what we got going on today. As I just mentioned, we have our co pilot, Simiso. Uh, with us on board today, our flight attendant Ted Station, our air marshal FS Insane question mark, and our gate agent of Don Louie. So yeah, that's what we're rocking with. But the rest of you guys are are welcome to come aboard. I am standing here right now on the uh, jet, oh, not the jet, on the stairs, welcoming you guys aboard. Welcome, welcome aboard. Is seven three seven seven hundred. Arel, welcome to the stream, my friend. AP do welcome aboard, my friend. Good to see you. Mike Visions in the house. Welcome to the stream, man. Good to see you as well. Who else we got up in here? Uh, official well, Mike Daly. Welcome to the stream, my friend. Captain John, welcome to the stream, bro. Welcome back. Welcome back. And no, we're not flying an H jet today. Elephant, welcome to the stream, man. Good to see you. Aiden DeLoza, welcome aboard. Uh, Low Captain, welcome back. Good to see you, my friend. James, welcome back. ATX in the house. Always good to have Texas representing. Mr. Junior, welcome to the stream, my friend. Good to see you. Chilling with a coffee in hand. I see you, my friend. Good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome aboard, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope I didn't miss anybody. Uh, no, no shades today. Uh, for me, shades is kind of a special occasion kind of thing. I only wear them on Fridays and on like very, very special streams. So that's why I'm not wearing shades. This is my normal look. This is how I look normally. <laughs> so if you don't like me, you've come to the wrong place. Uh, Starlet, welcome back, man. Welcome to the stream. Dante Baker, welcome back to the stream. Good to see you, man, as well. Yes, so we are on Pilot Edge today. It's been a while. Uh, I've actually looked back at, I call it my YouTube discography, and we haven't been on Pilot Edge since November of last year, which I believe was either right before or right after Flight Sim Expo. Yeah, it's been a while, it's been a while. And it's not that I don't like Pilot Edge. Oh, snap. <laughs> Mike, Mike's vision coming through with the super chat donation, man. Thank you for getting it started. Thank you so much for coming through, supporting the channel, and any way you do. But thank you so much for that. You didn't have to do it, but you did it, and I'm thankful. I'm grateful. Thank you so much. Uh, but yes, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting back into it. Hopefully, everything's gonna go well. Uh, especially since I got to talk to these guys in a few hours tonight on the Blue Experience episode 29, where we'll be interviewing Pilot Edge. So, yeah, that's going to be an interesting debrief if I screw this up. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, we're going to have them on the show later, so definitely check that out later. But for now, we're boarding. We're good. Uh, what's up, Gamer Netic? What's the best thing about being on a, being a ramp agent? You applied uh, and you like, uh, you like information, I guess, on what it's like with my experience. Um, it's dope. I like it. I love it. I love it. Um, we can talk more about it in flight. Um, I don't want to delay the flight anymore but I in general I like personally like being a ramp agent I think it's a great job for somebody who just loves aviation because you get the opportunity to be around aircraft in a secure area um, it's just dope I love it I really do so yeah we can talk more about that later if you want and uh, just ask me once we get in flight right, I'm turning music down I'll just turn it off and let's get started so as we are we already did right before the stream we did a little walk around everything looks pretty good uh, you see the uh, Cat, so we have uh, the aft crew back there taking care of the um, you know, snacks and whatnot. We got the stairs connected, we got the GPU connected up here, all representing Swiss port. We take actually not taking fuel, we need to tell the fueler how much we need. It's gonna take a while, we need to take care of that ASAP. And in the back, we have the potable water that is the drinkable water um, that we can have refilled in the back of the aircraft, and then below here, we have our air unit this is where we get you know ac for the interior of the aircraft when the apu is not on so that's what that is 
But I'm gonna go leave the camera out here. We'll go back inside to the cockpit. Oops. Uh, no? No, inside. Inside? Not inside. There we go. Now we're inside. I'm like, huh. That's not the right button. Interesting. So anyways, because it takes so long, I'm gonna go ahead and just get the fueler going because we can't, for whatever stupid reason, <laughs> use fuel and, and baggage at the same time. In real life, you can do it. It's fine. I don't know why. PNDG designed it this way. Hopefully, whenever they decide to come out with their first hotfix update, maybe next year, I don't know. Sorry. Sorry. A little salty. A little salty. I'm a, I'm, I apologize for, for, for that. Um, I love PNDG. I love, I love this plane. It's just, you know, we ain't got an update yet. It's, it's fine. It works fine. Nothing's wrong with it. Mostly. It's just, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, uh, fuel. We need. <laughs> we need. We need. We need. How much fuel do we need? Tell me, dispatch, how much fuel do we need? Reserves, taxi, block. There it is. 14,173 pounds of fuel. So I'm going to go over here and get that set up. Yes, uh, Deuce Legend, he knows. Last time we flew a Velo, things did not work out. So, well. matter of fact, I think we flew it out of Burbank. So this is me trying to redeem myself from the last time we attempted to fly a Velo. Last time we flew, if you guys weren't here on that stream, uh, we were flying a Velo 737-700 with the level up 737 on X-Plane. We need 14,173, 14,173 pounds right there. All right, and we're actually not completely empty um, from my last flight, I had about 12,000, so it should take no time to get it fueled. All right, so he's gonna do his thing there, that's good. Um, but yeah, last time it didn't go so well. I don't know if we were on VATSIM or Pilot Edge, I have no idea what network we we're flying on. I just know that uh, it's a short runway. And we, yeah, wish us luck. Anyway, so that's good. Um, is are we powered up? Yeah, we got GPU connected. Battery is on. Uh, we're not on APU power, but let's kind of look and see where we are. So what I've been doing last time I streamed, we did a Ryan Air flight, and uh, somebody gave me a really good suggestion. And basically, what they said was that whenever you finish a flight, you could create a new aircraft state based on the ending state. Of that flight to kind of give you kind of a, a constant like ongoing thing so that's what I did so basically now this is well I mean I turned the GPU on and the battery on but other than that everything else is as it was last time I flew a 737 which happens to be that Ryanair stream <laughs> I haven't flown the 73 in that long it's crazy that's crazy I've been doing DCS and fighter jets and Top Gun and helicopters all kind of stuff. 3, so I think I think we're good I'm gonna go through some flows no, so we'll Walker get them 3. turned down we're gonna call them for clearance here in just a little bit matter of fact we're gonna switch over to um, to uh, ATIS in just a little but first I'm gonna get things so y'all damper is up uh, we got no fuel pumps turned on that's how I like it this is all good uh, it's 10 by power is an auto, batteries on, ground power is on, APU gins and gen, gen switches are all off, uh, runway lights, tax lights off, APU off, ground set to off, off, circuit breakers, panel lighting on, supply, good, uh, seatbelt signs are in off, smoking signs are in auto, and yeah, that's good, uh, probe heat off, window heat on, hydraulic pumps, uh, A off, Middles are off. Right is on. Uh, da -da. Yeah, it kind of the, making me kind of continue the state from last time makes me look a little closer at it. I'm not using a checklist, which I should, um, but it makes me look a little bit closer at it because um, I could have left a switch unswitched when I stopped my last flight. Uh, one thing we need is what, what are we cruising at today? I think we're cruising at 39,000, 36,000. So I'm going to set this. 36,000 feet and our landing altitude in uh, Medford, Oregon. Wait, is it Oregon? I thought it was California. Where are we going? <laughs> Where are we going today? I don't know. We'll see what the GPS takes us because I don't forgot already, apparently. I think it's. I think it's. Let's see. Yeah, Medford. Yeah, we're going to Medford. That's in Oregon. I thought it was in California. Either way, uh, elevation, see, uh, landing elevation would be 1,294. So, basically 1,200 feet. There we go. That's good. Right, so, that's good. All right. Cool. 
So he's doing his thing. I'm trying to see if there's anything else the ground crew can do while we are getting our IFR clearance. We can call out the passenger bus. That's the only way for us to actually get passengers on board. And we are expected to have uh, 122 passengers on board. Just 737. So passenger bus is arriving, and then once he gets here, we'll go start boarding that, and uh, we'll get our IFR clearance. Get out of here. Hello, my friend Kakao from uh, Kakako from Kenya. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome back. Welcome, welcome back. Yeah, thank you, dudes, for reminding me. It was it was Burbank. <laughs> that was not a good flight that day. I don't even remember what. Ha Did we just end the stream early after we crashed? I didn't set takeoff speed and activate auto throttle on takeoff. The NTSB report <laughs> concluded. <laughs> the plane guy woke to the stream, man. Brian Harris, thank you guys. Uh, so it is in Oregon. That's what I thought. I was like, when I said it out loud, I was like, wait, that's Oregon. I right, start boarding 122 passengers. They'll start doing their thing. While they're doing that, before I put any information into my FMC, I personally like to get my IFR clearance just to make sure they don't make any changes because they can. Uh, I will put my position in initialization and get the IRS aligned at least. So Kilo Bravo Uniform Romeo. It's going to go right there under ref. And I think we don't have to do this, but yeah, I have it set to. Oh, whoa, what did I do? There we go. Alright, so that's set heading. Go to nav. Back to our FMC. We should get some boxes pop up here in just a second. I'm gonna grab this one. There it is. Drop it in there and the IRS will start aligning. Uh, I did not import my flight plan from Simbrief. Um, you have to do the file way. You can't just import it like, I wanna say electronically, but you know what I'm trying to say. You gotta like do like a little extra work to get the import. So I didn't do that. So I had to put everything in manually. I think it'd be better to do that way anyways. Uh, so I, I more trust what I input than what uh, it inputs. So we're going to Kilo Mike Foxtrot Romeo. Now the f airport we're flying to is a freeware airport in Medford, Oregon, and it looks amazing. This guy made, he probably made a bunch of other sceneries, but the ones that I found and download, he, he made Medford, Eugene, and Redding. And they're all like, they're free, but it's not just like basic. It's like he actually created custom 3d models for all the terminals and all the areas so he did a really good job on that so that is amazing so flight number today is a velo 111 to uh which is actually victor x-ray papa that's the uh the call sign they go by 111 now this is a real world flight we're running today matter of fact i think this flight just landed maybe 20 minutes ago in medford so this is a real world route they fly for a velo airlines so all right that's all good let's go and get calling get our clearance and then we'll get on the move out of Burbank. Let me get uh, everything ready to copy, though. That's kind of important. John Wintel, good morning. Walker 381, ILS, choose your right. Walker 380, John Lane Tower, wind calm, wind 20 right, clear land. Yeah, choose your right, clear land, Walker 380. And say Walker runs pilot edge, man. Walker, Walker Airlines, they'd be always on pilot edge. You always hear somebody from Walker on there. It's a great virtual airline. Klamath Falls, yeah, that sounds pretty fun too. Pilot Raid, what's up, man? What's up? What's up? Welcome to the stream. Yes, Phoenix got an update. I guess it was yesterday. Uh, I just updated mine today because I was gone all day yesterday. But um, yeah, it's got an update. I don't know what they changed, but I mean, it's, it's already great. So whatever they uh, update, yeah, sure. <laughs> whatever you guys update, just keep making it better. That's fine with me. All right, let's go ahead and call in. Uh, I gotta get a. Uh, hopefully, he can hear me. Let's go ahead and call in, and hopefully, my radio works. We shall see. And we are on tower, right? I mean, clearance. Clearance delivery is on one one eight point oh. It should be. Yeah, Burbank clearance one one eight point oh. These are all real world frequencies, so I'm using my charts uh, to grab the frequencies. And let's go ahead and call in, and we'll do it. I'm going to copy everything on my iPad. Oh, wait, we need the ATIS. Almost forgot. Hold on. Let's get that first. Uh, ATIS is on 1345. I got that plugged in. Aircraft landing runway 15. 4,250 feet available. 
VFR departures contact clearance delivery, advise on course heading, altitude, and if flight following is requested. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact you have information Oscar. Hey, Oscar is current. Burbank Glendale Pasadena Airport, ATIS information Oscar. 1553 Zulu, Wincom. Visibility Niner, sky condition, clear. Temperature 20, 2.14, altimeter 2987. Arriving and departing runways 8, 15. Visual approaches in use. Land and hold short operations in effect for non turbojet aircraft landing runway 15. 4,250 feet available. VFR departures contact clearance delivery. Advise on course heading, altitude, and if flight following is requested. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact you have information, Oscar. All right, guys, we have information, Oscar, here in Burbank. So we're going to call out for our clearance, and what I usually like to do um, to help me out, so I actually have on my iPad a ton of notes, um, and one of the things that people use is a thing called craft, right? Um, and it's a very typical thing you use for IFR. I'm probably going to screw it up because I haven't used it in a long time. <laughs> but uh, from what I understand, uh, CRAFT is like an acronym. So C means clearance. So clearance to where. Uh, R is your routing. A is the altitude. F is the frequency. And then T is the transponder code that you get. So um, I know that our clearance to where, to where we're going is KMFR. So KMFR. And then he's gonna um, hopefully give us the routing that we already have. Um, hoping to get 39, 36,000 feet, 10 minutes after departure. Uh, our departure is expected to be the Oros uh, Zulu 2. I'm not sure how to say that. Good old no, crap. I don't know, something about piloted makes me pull out all the pilot tricks. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, when I'm flying on VATS, I'm like, what the heck is craft? But when I, when I get on, on <laughs> pilot edge, I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this right. I gotta do this right. Yeah, so altitude, especially is about 36,000 feet. We might get an initial altitude as well. Uh, I can look at the departure chart and see. If there's anything on there uh, it says top altitude to 23,000 so we might get 23,000 and whenever I get IFR clearances I try my best to predict as much as possible he can always give me something different but I try to predict as much as I can as possible so he's probably gonna say you know clear to 23,000 feet expect 36,000 feet at 10 minutes of departure we shall see but being able to write this down ahead of time helps me remember it when he's saying it you know what I'm saying so we'll see I, I might still screw it up so I'm not going to talk too highly. Uh, departure frequency, I don't know. It doesn't say on the chart. So he's going to be giving us one. Nope. All right, cool. All right, let's go ahead and copy. I far. And we have Oscar. Burbank clearance, Avello 116. We have information on Oscar. Looking for IFR to Medford. He didn't hear me, did he? <laughs> I don't know, sometimes there's a pause, so I'll give him a couple seconds. Still nothing. Burbank clearance, Avello 116. Yeah, he must not hear me. I know I'm on the right frequency. I just heard him talking. Uh, no, I do not have the Honda Jet. And I uh, don't know that I have plans to get it yet, but we'll see. I'm going to remap my push. To oh, you know what? I think we have to map a push to talk in uh, Microsoft, right? Or is that how it works for VATSIM? 
I can't remember. Let me check real quick because we might have to have a push to talk on here. Let me check the website too, make sure I have it set up right. I haven't done a flight with them like since November, so and I had to reinstall everything because I restarted all my windows uh, not long ago. So everything has been deleted from how it was. So I'm gonna go over here to our Thrustmaster TCA yoke. And let's see if we can find anything in here for... All right, so that's input is not set to anything. Let me double check. Let me double check. What up, Ethan? Welcome to the stream, man. Uh, tune into the frequency to do a mic. That's what I'm doing right now, Jamil. I'm already on the frequency, and uh, I did my initial IFR request, heard nothing back. Then I just did a mic test, heard nothing back. So I'm assuming he can't hear me. <laughs> Thank you, Geo. Man, what's up, bro? Geo has been a member for a minute, man. Thank you for being a gold member. Thank you for that. 11 months. Wow, that's one month away from a year. That's nuts, Geo. Oh, G, man. But I know Geo's been supporting the channel for way longer than 11 months, man. But thank you so much for that, bro. Thank you for that continued support. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to see if it says anything in here about putting a push to talk button. I don't see anything. I think there is a push to talk thing right in here. Let me see. Or PTT. Like a uh, bat sim has. No, not push back. No. Well, if I go to one, two, three, four, five, unless one of you guys are on there to tell me that you can hear me, there's not going to be any point of going to one, two, three, four, five. But if you're there, then yeah, we can do a mic check. I don't see a, a talk thing. I know there's one because I have one for Vatsim. Because uh, Vatsim changed uh, not long ago to have the ability to have a push to talk button within Microsoft Flight Sim. So PTT doesn't work. I can't just type talk, but radio or something. Right click on a pod edge. Yeah, that's what I have open on my other screen. And uh, push to talk says button one TCA yoke Boeing, which is what I use for everything. Where the heck is it? <laughs> I don't know where it is. Uh, can you escape that? No. No. Uh, let's see. No. What is this? search radio? Go away tab. Don't need you. Here we go. Set com toggle autopilot master arm auto throttle. I mean, I know it's in V pilot, not pilot edge, but I was wondering if they had a thing to click like on X plane. To get your push to talk to work, you have to actually set a button on uh, on that. I don't know if I can't remember if Pilot works that way. Toggle autopilot, toggle radio, radio, nav radio, avionics, flight. Oh, uh, this is toggle. Yeah, nope, nope. Yeah, I don't see anything in here about about that. All right, let's go back and uh, we'll just see. I've, I've reset the pilot this thing. We'll see if it works. I'm right, we'll back to. Glendale, All right, Airport. so that's Eight working. Information, Oscar. One five five three Zulu. So we're Wait receiving. Calm. That's good. Let's try it again. Burbank clearance. Uh, Velo one one sixteen radio check. Level 116 Burbank clearance. Beautiful. Okay, I changed literally nothing. I did nothing different. 
that <laughs> didn't do nothing. I don't I don't understand technology. Whatever. Let's move on. Um, what was I gonna say? Let me get my crap ready again. Um, okay, here we go. Where bank clearance available 116. We have information. Oscar looking for IFR to Medford. Level 116, Burbank clearance, clear to Medford Airport, Oros 2, departure, Castro, transition, then as filed. Maintain 4,000, expect flight level 360 within one zero minute. SoCal departure 134.2, squawk 7262. 7262. Alright, clear to Medford via the Oros 2, uh, Castro transition up to 4,000, uh, and then expect flight level 360, 10 minutes after departure. Departures on 134.2 and Squawk 7262 for Velo 116. Velo 116, we're back, correct. Beautiful. All right, so that's good to go. All right, we got what we filed. Nothing, no changes. We got the audio stuff figured out. Sorry about that delay. Let's go ahead and let the passengers know that we are now delayed because of that little hiccup there. Uh, where is my Pack X? We are using Pack X today. I don't have a sound pack for a Velo. I wasn't able to find one. Sadly, uh, it is a budget airline, so they don't really have like TVs <laughs> inside. Uh, I'm gonna show you a very special thing later on um, about uh, about that. Hold on. Uh, technical issue. Length. Give me thirty minutes. All right, we got the Rose 2 departure, Castro transition, and then, uh, was it? yeah, I don't know what runway we're going to get. They're using runway 8 and 15, so I'm just going to go with the route, next page, and we'll fill in the rest of our flight plan. Uh, from there, we go to SAC, which I think is a Sacramento VOR. So Sierra, wow, is that right? No, that's not right. Who does SAC? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, Sierra Alpha, Charlie. It's going to go right here and go direct. And we want the top one, I believe. Oh, it is Sacramento. Okay, cool. Uh, Sacramento, and then over, hop on to the Juliet 6.5 airway to RBL, Romeo Bravo Lima. And then direct to F uh, FJS, Fly J Sim. I'm just kidding. Uh, Foxtrot Juliet Sierra. Uh, and then Papal, Papa, Alpha, Papa, Lima, Echo. And then Kohler, Kilo, Oscar, Lima, Echo, Romeo. Decent amount of waypoints today. I feel like I'm in Europe. And Sierra, Alpha, Mike, India, Echo, Sammy. All right, that's all good. For our next page, we can take a look through. I didn't put the departure runway because we don't know. Uh, we don't have an arrival, so we're just going to put in the uh, runway. We're expecting to get runway 14. We'll just, for now, put the ILS 14 via Sammy. And then later we can make that change. All right, well, what else we got to do here? So uh, I guess we could activate it. I don't want to activate it because I don't know what runway we're going to get. But we're not going to know what runway we're going to get until we push back. So I'll just activate it. All right, execute. All right, now uh, let's go to our right screen. I'm really looking forward to PMDG getting an AFB. Hopefully it's good. I think it will be though. Uh, I think they'll do a good job. Go to menu here and I'm gonna grab our ground services and we'll check up on them. Make sure the fuel should be done, which it is. We can go ahead and release the fuel truck. Release the water, because they've been watering the aircraft for like forever. Passengers are already on board and ready to go. They're waiting for me. Passenger bus can go. Aft galley can go. Uh, let's go grab the baggage trucks. So all we have left. So I want to request both of those. And I don't know how much we need yet. We'll find out here in just a little while. Actually, no. Was it? What did I think I was using like a calculator before? I think it was like 122 times 40. Let me see. So basically, the, on average, a passenger's uh, bag will weigh like 40 to 45 pounds. So, do a little math and math, we'll put 2,400 in the front, 2,400 in the back. Uh, pounds of uh, car, of, uh, and that's for a full flight with like 
Southwest where all the bags are free. <laughs> Everybody has a bag. So all right, that's good to go. Return. And now back over to our main FMC here on the right. We'll go to our perf page. And I guess we can't really do ground weight until we really have the numbers for uh, the, uh, the bags. But we can put in what we think it's going to be. Captain, you're already in the air, man. You beat me to it. I'm pretty, yeah, I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty slow at this. <laughs> I'm not very fast. Uh, I'm not surprised. I'm reading chat and, you know, all this. I got so many things going on. I'm lucky to get off the ground in 30 minutes. All right, so uh, plan fuel. We're expecting to bring about, what, 14.2. So I'll put one. Oh, that's backwards. 14.2. Uh, zero fuel weight. Is that in here? Yeah. That's me. 112.2. Our reserve fuel is 2,000, so 2.1, 2,100. Our cost index is 16. And our cruise winds. Let me go grab that real quick. Uh, average wind, 223.35. That'll go right here. What did I do wrong? Won't well, let me put it in there. Two, two, three. Maybe I gotta put the zero. Zero, three, five. No, huh? What the heck? Interesting. I don't remember having that problem. Oh well. Uh, Thirty-six thousand feet. So we're expecting for our cruise level today. Uh, my next available flight should be New Haven to Fort Lauderdale. That is also a real-world flight. They have a lot of uh, real-world flights on both the West Coast and the East Coast. You know what I found out that a lot of people don't know? and I, I mean, maybe, maybe you do know, but I didn't know this. But Avello Airlines is based out of Houston, Texas. Now, I know it sounds weird because they don't have a single flight going in or out of Houston, Texas. But apparently the headquarters is here in Houston. Um, yeah. Didn't know that until I was doing some research earlier. Why is my cruise wind? Alright, so it looks like our ground weight. I guess that's that, that auto filled in. We'll try to put in uh, cruise one more time. So 223, unless I did it wrong. 223-035. Now it's working. Okay, sure, whatever. Uh, performance init request. We could do that. We don't need to. Basically, what that does is it brings in my sim brief one, which I don't even have a sim brief one. So it ain't got nothing to bring in, so it's not gonna bring anything at all. So I'm just gonna skip it. Uh, I'm gonna hit execute though. And now we have our actual perf initialization page in one limit. I'm gonna skip that page. Over to takeoff flaps will be five for takeoff today. Our CG is. I don't remember where that is. Is that something that I know? <laughs> or did I just click on that? I'm not in the Phoenix today. Okay, we can click on it. Cool. That saves a lot of time. 25.6% and trim 4.8. Let's go drop that in at 4.8. Oh, boy. We're not far from it. Oh, wow. It, yeah, it could be tax purposes. It's probably cheaper to have a headquarters. It, it is, Avello is a budget airline. So they're going to probably do everything they can to be cheap. Um... That's why you see budget airlines here in Burbank. Yeah, Southwest. Well, Southwest is not really a budget airline. They're freaking expensive, too. Um, Frontier, Spirit, you know, all those guys. All right, so we got that in. What else we got to do here? Uh, we don't have a runway yet, so we don't have V-speeds. That is correct. Huh. Let's start loading those. Shouldn't take long. Uh, remember? Oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, bro. Again, I haven't flown this plane since our last 737 stream, which was a couple weeks ago. So thank you guys so much for reminding me. Uh, anything else I missed, please, please let me know. Uh, where, how do I get the perf page? No, 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 no. Take off? No. Departure? No. Index. Yeah, index. Menu, FMC, no, nope. init ref. There it is. Uh, yeah, so zero fuel weight, you gotta click on that, right? Yep, okay, there we go. Cool. Execute that. 
thank you. Thank you so much. I think if we don't do that, the uh, V9 won't work. So that's all the good. All we have left is our takeoff page. We can't fill this out really until we have a departure runway. We don't have a departure runway yet. Uh, one of the things I'm excited about for today's flight is that I haven't been on Pilot Edge in a while. And kind of the reason why is because I've been doing a lot of flying on Microsoft Flight Sim. And, you know, the last flight I did on Pilot Edge was the A320 because I felt like the fly by wire A320 had finally got to a point where it was actually dependable enough to bring onto what I call a serious ATC network pilot edge. Um, and now with the Phoenix and the 737, I feel like we finally have, I'm not sure why I'm setting this, um, but we finally have like an aircraft like this, like the PNG 737, the Phoenix 320, even the MD-80 um, that we can actually depend on and it can run on a network like pilot edge. So we're almost ready to go guys. Again, we are just a little bit delayed. Uh, we're just waiting for the bags to get put in. A few last minute bags, about a uh, thousand pounds more to go. Other than that, we are ready to push. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the APU started while we're waiting for them. We'll get the fuel pumps on. We shouldn't have any fuel in the center. Nope, we don't. All right, fuel pump one, two, three, and four are all on. And here comes the APU. What is this camera? <laughs> like, how did I get here? Okay, here we go. Here we can hear that APU fire up. Come on, Rex. Ignore that. <laughs> I'm like, why is that so quiet? All right, APU is available. The gin's available. So pop that. Pop that one time. Pop it two times. Oop, wrong way. Went up instead of down. There it is. And we'll get the... Uh, Isolation valve to auto, pack on left. It's so weird because they want you like to scroll, but my I might turn off the scroll because it just ends up just zooming me out, and that's annoying. All right, good. <laughs> All right, you ain't gotta you ain't gotta rub it in my face, Captain. You already had twenty thousand feet. I'm about twenty thousand feet away from being at twenty thousand feet. What is this? No, nah, go away. Like, literally nothing is happening, and you're telling me that I'm offline? They got Delta ERJ Park next. So, oh, Frontier's taxing out. Southwest. Southwest on the other side. It's like the Southwest on the runway. Uh, today's flight. Great question, my friend. How long is today's flight? Would you believe me if I told you I don't know? Yeah, you would. Uh, today's flight time is one hour, 33 minutes from Burbank to Medford, a real world route by Avello Airlines. All right, they should be done with the bags now. They should be done. Do I need to go down there and help them? Yeah, they're done. All right, cool. All right, you guys are free to go. Go and get everything disconnected. While they're doing all the disconnections, I am going to jump in. I, I reinstalled two-bar pushback so that we could have an automatic pushback. Uh, we don't need ground power because we're now on APU. It's going to make sure that ground power is disconnected, not you know running anything. So I'm going to click on it. That's good. And we don't need AC anymore, so disconnect those as well. And I think one thing I love about the PNDGs, I love watching all the ground services pull in and pull out away from the aircraft. It's something I really do enjoy watching. Really, really looking forward to getting a GSX or something like TSX, like an actual ground handling plugin or, or application for Microsoft Flight Sim to make it more realistic on the ramp and at the gate. I think that's going to be great. So there goes the baggage trucks driving away. And here comes the Swiss port tug. 
to pick up the AC unit. And he should... I think they already took away the GPU. Yeah, they did. Alright, cool. Alright, let's get it. We do have the stairs still connected, so we gotta get rid of those two. Sorry, I'm walking over here so slowly. I'm a one-man show. It's just me. I gotta do everything. I gotta do the, the bags. I gotta fly the plane. <laughs> Basically, I'm a caravan pilot. That's what they do. Did you know? You know that, right? I, like, people who fly like caravans, like they literally do everything. <laughs> they they're flight attendants, you know, because they don't have a door. They're uh, they they load the bags. They fuel the plane. They do every freaking thing. All right. So GPU card. Goodbye. Where's my? I don't want to type that. There's stairs. Release. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. And where's my tool bar, tool bar pushback? Alright, where we want to go? The only logical place to push back is tail to the right. Uh, there is a non-movement area right here. We'll go here. I'm not sure. I've never... I've... I mean, it's, I think I've only been to Burbank once, and I don't remember anything from it. But that's good right there. We should be allowed to push back without clearance. So we're not pushing back into the movement area. Alright, let's get him. I don't think it's first class in the Velo, so. <laughs> uh, you know, this little area doesn't have. This airport is confusing. I don't know. Anybody know a bunch about Burbank? Because it doesn't have a taxiway number. Over here. Like, there's nothing back there. So, we'll just push, whatever. <laughs> we'll just push and figure it out. Alright, let's go over the tower. Let me start that tower. Uh, ground. Ground is on 123.9. And we'll check the ATIS again. 5. 4,250 feet available. VFR departures contact clearance delivery. Advise on course heading, altitude, and if flight following is requested. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact you have information, Oscar. Hey, right, Oscar's still current. That's all I want to know. And the, uh, da, 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 where is my thing? The, uh, what's it called? The thing, uh, the, yeah, 2987 is the thing. You know I'm talking about the thing. That way, two. Come on, scroll. Thank you. Is it on both sides? Perfect. All right, request pushback. Cockpit to ground. Cockpit to ground. ground. This is ground. To ground. Don't Stand do by. that. This is ground. Stand by. That's annoying. This is ground. Stand by. Okay, sir. I don't know why I did that. We are cleared for start and push. We are cleared for start and push. Don't be like that. Cleared for start and push. Don't be like that. All doors and hatches closed and all ground equipment is removed. Okay, sir. The bypass pin is installed. All doors and hatches closed and all ground equipment is removed. Okay, cleared for push start. Okay, cleared for push start. That's annoying. Okay, cleared for push start. Please release parking brake. <laughs> I don't know why it does Please that. Please release parking brake. Please release parking brake. Please release parking brake. Can I release parking brake? Please release parking brake. <laughs> Can I release my parking brake now? <laughs> All right, we got the vehicle. Please release parking brake. Vehicle lights Please coming on. Shut up. Please Wait, that's not vehicle light. This is vehicle light. Are my doors closed? Please release parking brake. Please release parking brake. Please release parking brake. Yeah, yeah, they're closed. Please release parking brake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please release parking brake. Please release parking brake. He's just gonna yell at me until I do it, huh? Please release parking brake. Please release. Do I have a brake button? Break. I don't remember. Please release parking brake. I do. Parking oh. brakes are released. Alright, what was that squat code? Parking brakes are Commencing released. Seven two six. Parking brakes are released. Oh my god, this Commencing thing. We will start in the sequence. This is ridiculous. We will start in the sequence. Commencing pushback. Is he gonna repeat everything? How many pushback drivers do we have? 
All right, we're pushing. Thought I had a view down here. Apparently, I don't. All right, squawk in seven two six two. Traffic, traffic. And starting to. Okay, push back completed. Please set your parking brake. Brake set. Clear disconnect. Show me the pin. Ground. You may disconnect. Okay, sir. Clear to disconnect. Pin has been removed. See you at the side. Have a good flight. Holding really position, low. waiting for the visual. Thank you and goodbye. That was the most. That was the most annoying pushback ever. <laughs> the worst pushback. The absolute worst pushback ever. When instructed to do so, open the plastic pouch and remove the vest. Hey right, guys, we're starting engine two. Wrap the straps around your waist and buckle at the front. And the introduce some fuel. To inflate the vest, pull firmly on the red cord only when exiting the air. It's quieter than I remember. If your life vest does not inflate automatically, blow into the mouthpieces for manual inflation. Each vest is equipped with a whistle and light. If necessary, your seat cushion can be used as a secondary flotation device. Pull the cushion from the seat, slip your arms into the straps, and hug the cushion to your chest. Please securely stow your personal items. St. Louis ground, radio check, please. Facts and trade tables are in their full of radio check, loud and clear. We remind you that this is a non-smoking flight. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the smoke detectors located in the lab. Hey, it only took us an hour to get going? All yeah. That's way too long. <laughs> That's why we're only doing one leg today. Alright, engine two is on and stable. Starting engine one. Yeah, we should use PMDG's pushback. I don't know. Two more pushback usually gives me doesn't give me an issue. I've had that problem before. I don't know what causes it. What I think causes it is when the aircraft has its own pushback function. I think it's like I don't know. It has some kind of issue, a glitch with that. Because it's happened to me before on the flyby wire as well. <laughs> show me your hands. Show me your hands. <laughs> Am I getting pulled over? Nice, nice. I don't know, I felt like it's been a while since I've flown this plane. But for some reason, I was under the impression that the engine sounded much better on startup. I don't know. Am I tripping? I feel like I'm tripping. All right, everything is removed. We can get rid of this whole page. Let's go ahead and call for taxi. Uh, we don't know what we're going to get yet, so we still have to fill out our takeoff reference. And we're on 123.9. And I don't know what to tell him where we are. <laughs> just at the thing so let's go call them up Burbank round Velo 116 is ready to taxi with Oscar Velo 116 Burbank ground verified position uh, yeah we just pushed back over next to 33 facing north I don't know what this area is called Hello, uh, 116, Papa's current now, altimeter 2987, runway 15, taxi via Alpha, Alpha cross runway 8 at Alpha. Alright, uh, taxi to runway 15 via 8 cross, uh, sorry. What? <laughs> Hello, 116, runway 15, taxi via Alpha, cross runway 8 at Alpha. Yeah, that's what I meant to say, sorry. Uh, runway 15 via Alpha, cross 8 at Alpha, and we have Papa now, uh, available 116. 
I didn't write the whole thing down. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like reading it as I... <laughs> so, uh, I guess we'll go straight ahead. He said cross eight at alpha. Where's alpha at? All right, eight, alpha straight ahead. So cool. Good to go. All right, now we know where we're going, so we can put this stuff in. Archer, runway one five. Take off. Uh, I just gotta hit execute, don't I? Let's start taxing first and we'll get this figured out. Alright, brakes release. Auto brakes at the RTO. Gin's on. 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 Bro heat. I'm really having trouble with these click spots today. Dark pumps. Uh, taxi lights, runway turn offs. A little bit of power. APU off. APU bleed off. Packs back on. It's hot out here in Cali. Gotta have that APU. Gotta have some air. Um, yeah, we're good. Cool. Get track IR running. Watch our wings on the right side. Hopefully, my engines all work fine. <laughs> By the way, this airport is made by Orbix. Oh, that sounds nice. Alright, so this up here is runway 8 and Alpha. Not gonna bother turning on the strobes because. I can't reach him. <laughs> I'll just say that. We'll let the first officer do that for us. The FedEx, not sure if he's parked in the right spot, but he's over there. Uh, flaps check, thank you. We'll put the flaps down, five. Yeah, that's a good first officer. That's a good first officer. Is that five? I think that's five. Right, we're now clear of eight on alpha. We'll taxi straight down to the end to runway one five. And I thought I saw traffic. Yeah, I see traffic ahead of us. Looks like a Southwest 737. We have our altitude set to 4,000. That's our initial climb altitude given by ATC. We do have a departure frequency. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab tower while we're rolling here. Uh, tower's on 118.7. And using my radio panel. I think this is actually my first time using this with, with Pilot Edge. That's like the main reason I got it. And now this is my first time actually getting to use it with them. So 18.7 is pre selected. Uh, transponder, I think, is set. Yeah, 7262. Yeah, man, 1080Ti is still a beast, man. It does good. It does good. I mean, I'm not running my sim at ultra. Um, I've decided to go down to medium, and even on medium, it's looking pretty good to me. Like, I'm pretty happy with the visual quality of it, even at me. Look at those beautiful mountains over there in Hollywood. We have to try doing an approach in the Burbank sometime in the future. Not today, unless unless we have to come back because of a failure or something. Then uh, we're not coming. We're doing one leg today. Come on, Clarence Scott, 2455 for Romeo. Look to pick up our IFR to Palomar for the I2. Yeah, 2455. Uh, yes, I'm at default to medium. Uh, except we I've changed uh, the clouds to ultra. Minutes That's all I've changed. Climb and maintain 5000. SoCal departure on 128.1. Squawk 6153. I think it's a hotel. Okay, we're clear to the Palomar Airport on departure. We'll fly 175. Expect vectors to Victor 23. 
Uh, altitude 5000, departure frequency 128, decimal 1, and squawk 6153. Right, All aboard! 187. Thank you so much, Lewis, for the subscription. Welcome to the Blu ray family. Welcome, my friend. Sorry about that. Alright, we need to go over to one. Uh, yeah, one, three, two, four, two. What I love about having the radio panel is the fact that I can just reach over, make the change, don't have to take my eyes completely off the sim, you know, and take, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to look down and do it. I can just look right here. So one, three, four, f one, three, four, two. So hopefully that was correct. All right, cool. All right, I'm going to hold here, set the parking brake real quick. Make sure we got everything locked up and ready to go. All right, so we got the packs turned on. We got the engine bleeds on, AP bleed is off. Uh, altitude is set. That's good, that's good. Um, we need to get our V speeds, that's what we need. Uh, let's go to departure. 1 5. Execute that, back to route. Check our legs page. We do have a departure. We're using the Oros uh, 2 departure. Should have us flying out of here at a heading of 210. Good, and I'm gonna check and see if this actually works because this should work too. It does, cool. So if I need to use this, I'll use this. 210, 4000 set. Uh, from there, we'll probably get vectors direct to Tiller. I don't even see that on my oh, wire. Uh, it didn't put my departure in here, like at all. There we go, Castro. Glad I checked that. Execute that. Route. Uh, next page. Oh, discontinuity there, which it should be. Legs, Vector, Tiller. I'm so glad I looked at this. Oroz, uh, Heijo, and then Castro. So that's all in there as it's supposed to be. Except we don't want this discontinuity here. So I'm going to click on Sack and drop it there. Execute that. Beautiful. Um, it's not showing ground, Skyhawk, two, four, five, five, my Vina profile. At Clay Lacey, in aviation, looking to text you the active. I gotta find out why. Right, two, four, five, five, Romeo, John Wayne, ground verify your transponder's on, I don't see him. Uh, XQ. Recycle that. Pick off. Alright, now we got that. One, two, one, one, two, four, one, three, two. John Wayne, ground, two, four, five, 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 uh, yeah. yeah. Number 2455 Romeo, John Wayne Ground, runway 20. Let's right check our legs page again. And Zero. now we have our VNAV. Good, good, good stuff. Good stuff. No altitude restrictions, okay. really. 20 right at Kilo via Bravo and Kilo 2455 Romeo. Yeah, so we get climbing right turn heading 210 at a max of 23,000 feet, except this time it gave us 4,000 specifically. So, alright, cool. I am ready, guys, if you are. Uh, all right, so yeah, I'm, I was I wasn't there yet, Simi. So I wasn't there. I wanted to make sure that our actual, you know, uh, GPS was set correctly before we go and hit L Nav and all that. So all right, so now now I can do that. <laughs> now I can do that. Uh, so I guess we'll hit L Nav and V Nav, right? That's how you do it, correct? L Nav, V Nav. Yeah, I think that's how you do it. Let's go and ask and tell them we're ready to go. One eight point seven, and we were in Burbank. Burbank Tower, Velo one sixteen is ready to go. On uh, one five. Level 116, Burbank Tower, runway 15, cleared for takeoff, wind calm. Cleared for takeoff, wind calm, level 116. Front is on, brakes off, flaps are set, lights, camera, action. Let's go. All right, clear to the right, and clear to the left. I hope my toga, do I have a toga button? I remember that being something that I needed. I really hope I do have a toga button. <laughs> I don't remember if I mapped that on this throttle. 
We're about to find out. Arm, I don't thought it was a copy. I don't thought it was armed. Look at that view right there. Mm. Delicious. Alright, I don't know if I have an auto, thr auto throttle, but we're about to find out. If you don't have a auto throttle, just hit the little screw on. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Is it this one? Where is it at? Where's the little screw at? The little screw on the MCP. Where's the screw at? The little screw. Wait, I think I just hit it. I did. I hit it. It's right there. There we go. And Toga. Airspeed alive. 80 knots. 80 knots. V1, rotate. V2. Positive rate of climb. Oh, wait. Yeah, I didn't do that on this one. Dude. Not off. Go to up. Thank you. <laughs> All right, climbing right turn to heading 210. Velo 116, contact departure. Over to departure. Velo 116. All right, heading select. Uh, autopilot. Autopilot. All right, beautiful. Over to departure. There's 210. We'll speed up some. Departure uh, Villa 116 is leveling off at 4,000. Villa 116, SoCal departure, radar contact, climb and maintain 6,000. Climb up to 6,000 of Villa 116. That is 6,000 and level change. Going tower, Scott, 2455 five, runway holding short. Uh, Let's do 250. Zero right at Kilo, ready for departure. Number two four five five Romeo John Wayne Tower wind calm and wind two zero right at kilo cleared for takeoff. Oh beautiful look at that. Take off for my two zero right at kilo two four five five Romeo. Love it, love it. Level one hundred sixteen when able to proceed direct killer, climb via SID. Direct Hiller, then climb via Sid. Avila 116. Give me a right turn, so it's gonna make start turning right. Whoa, F18. <laughs> Trying to. There it is, map. Thank you. Okay, yeah, now I know where I am. So I can use this guy. Turn right and go direct, direct Level tiller. 116 after a rose, resume normal speed. After a rose, resume normal speed. Level 116. He didn't give me a speed. Alright, we can continue to 8,000. He said, it's, uh, actually, did he say after? I'm trying to think this out. The direct to tiller, so we can go El Nav on to take us direct to tiller. The direct to tiller and climb via SID. We need to be at or above 8,000 at tiller. And I'm going to say the 20,000 feet. There we go. Looking much better. Lots of traffic in here. Look at all that traffic. Level 116, verify climbing via SID. A firm climbing via SID. Hey, Velo 116. Number 55, Romeo, contact. Right, I think departure. he's saying that we're taking too long to climb. Departure. So we're going to do manual room. climb to make sure. Level 116, radar's indicating your level at 6. Yeah, our plane's being a little slow, but we are initiating that climb manually now to. Uh, Climb via Sid. 
Another one sixteen. Roger, thank you. Yeah, so it, departure sky, two four five five Romeo. Yeah. And, uh, 13, <laughs> is there anything in front of us? Yeah, mountains. On the one, seven, five, so again, the restriction here on the chart says we need to be at or above eight thousand feet at Tiller. Tiller is ten miles away right now. Delivered morning, Southwest twenty six thirty three, clearance to San Diego, please. Dark gear actually in the right position. Yeah, gear is out. All right, we're looking much better now. We're going direct to Tiller. We're climbing manually. Once I get to Tiller, I'll turn VNAV back on. But I don't know why I was taking so long to climb. Okay, cleared San Diego via the ra uh, uh, Raider, Raiders 2 departure, love transition, then it's fine. Climb via the SID, squad 575. Uh, yes, seven, I can get terrain on the map. That would be pretty helpful. Uh, which, where's the terrain button? Terrain. I can't remember. We can use this one now. I like this one. How do I get terrain? I can't remember. Oh, here it is, terrain. Terrain, terrain, pull up. There we go, now we got terrain. I'll turn that off. We should see some terrain pop up in front of us. Hello, 116, contact Los Angeles Center, 125.27. 125.27, Villa 116. 12527. Alright, how are we looking? Alright, now on the VNAV. Yep, VNAV is working. And we're climbing via Rose. And I think it's center. Center of Villa 116 passing 10,000 climbing via SID. Villa 116, LA Center, Roger. Gentlemen, we have now passed 10,000. Alright, beautiful. Alright, 10,000, we just passed you, Herbie. Lights off. This is also a reminder to please keep your seatbelt fastened while you're seated and do not congregate in the galley or near the lavatory. This aircraft is equipped with onboard Wi Fi. Look at that view. Mm. The wi -Fi, you'll be Delicious. Climbing out, heading north, we got LA, uh, Los Angeles actually back behind us somewhere. I'm turning it down, we'll go outside. We should have a little bit of time to ourselves to actually do some outside views. The plane should take care of the rest. Turn down just a little bit, and let's go outside. And I got an F-18 Escort, Top Gun for life. Yeah, I'm trying to think. LA should be like directly behind us, like right back here in this open area. What a view, man. Yeah, this is why I love flying in Southern California. Yeah, 5 5 Romeo, turn left. I really do. Zero, join Victor 23. Can you go out the way, mouse pointer? <laughs> trying to get some cinematics. Where's that F-18 at? I want to see if we can get in formation. <laughs> Escort us up to Medford. Through the military operation area again. Uh-oh, big freeze. What is going on? We're still frozen. That's not good. That's not good at all. Come on back now, Microsoft. I believe in you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty much a straight out, straight out climb at this point. Wow, we're getting some massive freezes and I don't know why. Another one. What the heck? All right, let's go back inside. Something's not right. Are we gonna freeze again in here? Or is that just an outside thing? Yeah, it's an outside thing. Uh, does Pilot Edge not, uh, yes, Pilot Edge does have a system, um, where you can see the traffic. So, for example, just like in Vatsim, how you have model matching, and if someone else is at the same airport as you, you can see them. Pilot Edge has the same thing, same concept. And what I've done is I'm using AIG. Um, I'm using my exact same AIG setup for model matching, and I just put that in Pilot Edge. And basically all I had to do was put the VMR file, or VMR, VMR link, the same way you put it in, um, in Vatsim and the, the client. I did the exact same thing for Pilot Edge. So if we were to see traffic, 
someone flying. Avella 116, contact Los Angeles, center 133.2. 1332, Avella 116. All right, go over there. I want to make sure I got the right thing in. Yep, 1332, switch over. And we'll go here to standard. And what are we at? 19, about 20,000 feet. Uh, center of L116 coming up on flight level 200, climbing via suit. Level 116, LA Center, climb and maintain flight level 360. Up to flight level 360, Vela 116, thank you. Alright, 36,000. Alright, so VNAV is working beautifully. This is why it's so important, I feel like, when you're flying. It's the same on VATSIM as well. But when you're flying with ATC online, it doesn't matter if you're on Pilot Edge or VATSIM, you need to have an aircraft that is dependable, that you know is going to do what you programmed it to do. Um, because like today you notice how busy it was climbing out of Burbank I mean, we're, we're basically in the LA airspace so you go through like three or four different frequencies all within minutes of each other and so uh, that's why I turned the autopilot on so early usually I like to fly the plane up to about 10,000 feet that's what I like to do um, but in this case I was like you know what I already know it's gonna be a bunch of frequency changes maybe some heading changes and all that stuff I gotta deal with and I'm flying single pilot so I was like, all right, let me put autopilot on. I have it set to 4,000 already. I have it set to 210, uh, 210 heading. That's what my departure is set to do. I hit autopilot, it'll do that. And then I'm gonna go put my head down and get some other stuff done, right? So um, that's why I think it's so dependable. And that's why I'm glad we have this aircraft so we can actually have an aircraft that can I can depend on. And I feel like the PMDG-737 and the Phoenix and the fly-by-wire are all IFR capable aircraft that are very dependable to fly. So we're passing 23,000 feet now. Uh, climbing out of the sit, headed to Medford, Oregon, if you guys are just joining us in the PMDG 737 on the Pilot Edge Network. Beautiful view on the climb out, as it always is, coming out of sunny California. Sheesh, got to love it. Mm, mm, mm. Jacob, welcome to the stream, my friend. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, uh, Va in the same way that Tim has its multipla multiplayer traffic, same as Pilot Edge. Uh, and the same thing, my same... Uh, issue where you know unless you're flying into an event you're not really ever going to see an airport completely filled the way it should be in real life so what i've done is i'm using aig uh multiplayer traffic right so if you fly in here i'll see your ai model but also on top of that i'm using aig ai traffic so a lot of the traffic you, got, you saw on the ground back in Burbank, like the Frontier A320, the Southwest planes that were taking off and taxiing around, all of that was AIG models, or I should say AIG AI traffic. So AIG has a has a uh, a live traffic like injector kind of thing where it'll actually put traffic into your sim so you could actually see uh real world traffic moving around and flying with you. Look at there's that F18 doing his barrel road. Man, very but this guy is good. This guy is good. I think we're in trouble. We must have busted through some airspaces or something. <laughs> yeah, I need to get a screenshot. Get, 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 get in here, bro. Get in here. I need to get a screenshot. Let me get my screenshot maker ready. If you can get right off my wing, I can get a screenshot of you. <laughs> and then we'll go back into the flight deck and make sure the rest of our flight plan is set up correctly. Because I don't want to be going off course. Oh, here it comes, here it comes. He was there for a second. <laughs> he was there for a second. Uh, where is Medford? Medford is in Oregon. I'll show you guys here in just a little bit. Give me a, give me a second. He's so close. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. It's not easy. It's not, like, flying in formation is not easy to do, especially in Microsoft. And we're climbing too, like we're not even just flying. We're about to turn in about, I don't know, 10, 10, 30, 10, 20 miles. Go ahead and get my trust ready for Medford. Uh, did I check out the new Omaha scenery from Vertical Sim? I have not got a chance yet. That is actually on my list of places to go. Um, like ASAP. Hopefully we can make it there next week because uh, I have Omaha, the scenery in X Plane. I think it looks like, I think it looks great on X Plane. So I was definitely looking forward to seeing it come to Microsoft. Captain Ogier, what's up, bro? 
Yes, a Velo decided to rehire me. Got fired a while back from a Velo, and now we're back. Hopefully, we'll make him proud. I got a lot to prove today. This is what a Velo told me. A Velo said I had to have a smooth, uneventful flight and have a uh, butter landing in Medford. Yeah, that was their request. Oh, here comes the Contro. Look at this view out here. I, I gotta get some screenshots, guys. I have to. I need to make a new thumbnail for the stream. Why is it glitching like that? Okay, it doesn't do it when I'm not moving the camera around. So something's going on with it loading the scenery in the distance because it keeps freezing up. I need a dope. Oh, also they requested that I make a music video for a fellow. That's not us. <laughs> but it's probably the, the uh, head channel with Cal for your broadcasting 124.0. That's probably the CEO of a Velo keeping a close eye on me. He sent a fighter jet out here to make sure we don't do nothing stupid. Uh, I, I believe that. Yes, we got a great first officer by our side actually today. Thank you, Samizo. Uh, how many feet am I in? We are currently passing 32,000 feet. And a top of climb is coming up very soon. Let's go down here, go to our climb page. I'd like to have that up there and put legs page over here. All right, so we go from Castro direct to Sacramento via War. It's about 211 miles between those two waypoints, so it's a nice cruise. Um, once we get the cruise, I'll show you guys the, the full route map. To show you where Medford is in the world, as well as our uh, flight time and how long it's going to be till we get there. You can see right here, though, it will only be about 11 miles away from our top of climb. We'll be there at 1737 Zulu. But standard is set. Um, our altitude is set. We're on Vina. We're on Elna. Auto throttle is good. Uh, radios are good. Uh, yeah, we're squawking Charlie. All oh, that's good. I think we're I think we're a professional today, guys. I think we're doing this legit. Yeah, I think we're doing this legit. It was pretty smooth, straight out for the most part. We'll turn off seatbelt signs. The flight attendants will start serving you guys some snacks on today's flights. Uh, one thing, uh, and I'm not sponsored by Avello. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of trying to get sponsored by Avello. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, I'm, like I legit sent them an Instagram DM. <laughs> not kidding at all. Um, but, yeah, anyway, so, but one thing that's pretty cool that I've been following them on Instagram, and uh, they have, like, this thing where they do, like, free ticket Tuesdays or something like that. And so if you go on there, on their uh, web, not the website, if you go on their Instagram, their social medias, they promote a lot of free tickets to places. So if you're in the area of a place that, you know, a Velo flies to, or close, then I definitely recommend you checking that out. Because I mean, who doesn't want free tickets on an airliner? So you can see, I still have that glitch here of that screen. All right, we are leveling off. Thirty-six thousand feet. Uh, can you hit the actual toga button on the throttle on the plane? Yes, you can. I think it's right here, right, right behind the throttle. Let me sneak in there. Oh, too close. Yeah, I believe you can click on it. Yeah, I'm not gonna click it now, but you, I believe you can click on it. Usually I have that mapped to something, but I don't think I have it mapped on this throttle that I'm using today. All right, cool. We are level, and now it should be switched to our cruise page, and it'll show us that our top of descent is in 393 miles. Also, 1830 Zulu. Currently, it is 1730 Zulu. So, I guess exactly an hour from now. Is that right? Is that right? An hour from now, we should be descending. Hmm, interesting. Cool. Might descend even earlier than that. Yeah, there's Sacramento right there. Nice. I was trying to get some like screenshots, but it's not. It's not having it today. 
Uh, yes, yeah, so the way Paladins works is that you get ATC. Uh, I don't know what part of the world you're in, and I don't know how to translate this into Zulu or GMT, uh, but basically, California time, I believe the network is live from 8 a.m. to like, I don't know what time they close. Is it 10, 11 p.m. California time? So uh, Pacific. Uh, for me, that's like 10 a.m. to whenever. I think it's like midnight. Um, so, yeah, they're, but they're all, you're guaranteed to get ATC within the area for that time period. Uh, unlike that, some it's. That's not us. I don't think that's us. Was that us? Is that for us? He'll say it again if it's for us. <laughs> don't think it was for us. But yes, they're open for a certain period of time. From whenever. It says it on the website. I think I have the site open. Let me see. When are they open? Coverage. Uh, yeah, so they're op open 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Pacific time, seven days a week. And again, you're guaranteed to get ATC within those times. Um, now, they have a specific coverage area uh, from, like, L.A. up to Seattle, um, and then as far east as the edge of Montana. Um, you can get a little bit of Nebraska in there. There's a piece of Kansas. Number nine or two, nine or North Whiskey, Texas Alpha, is included. West Demo Texas Tower, is Western included. So it is only ATC as far, point. basically, as, as West Texas. Uh, once you get into Dallas, there's no ATC. Oklahoma, no ATC. Iowa, Minneapolis, stuff like that. So it's only the basically the western half of the United States that you get ATC, but you're guaranteed to get it um, through those periods of time. Also, Hello, if you... 16, contact Oakland, center 127.45. 12745 available 116. All right, 127445. Um, and then on the if you look on the website, they have a map that shows you all the airports that are controlled because there's some of the smaller airports that are in the coverage area, but you're not going to get like tower control. You'll get maybe you could probably call in an IFR, but you're not going to get tower control. All right, let's call in to wherever I think it's, uh, it's, uh, Oakland Center. Oakland Center, Velo 116, uh, 50360. Velo 116, Oakland Center, roger. Beautiful. All right, we got a new controller. And these guys are all, like, they're not volunteers. They're, like, paid to do this. So. <laughs> but I like it. I like it. I mean, I feel like, I mean, people, most people were kind of like, hey, well, I don't get into pilot ads because it's not in Europe, which it's not, and I completely get that completely understand that but yeah there's plenty of good flying to do out here in the west coast uh, it's really good if you like if you like flying vfr and uh ga planes mm. like what i really want to do and this is the reason why i want to get a mod for the f-18 or maybe not just the f-18 but for a military jet because i want to attempt to run the same thing we did last stream where we flew top gun through the Star Wars Canyon. This is all real world stuff. I want to attempt to do a flight exactly like that, but in an actual military jet and use comms as well. Now, DCS World, uh, there is a mod. I don't have it. I don't really know how to set it up, but I've seen it done before. There's a way you can mod and incorporate Pilot Edge into DCS World on the Nevada map because that's within Pilot Edge's coverage area. Um, but I believe it only works with the A10. And I haven't figured out how to work that. I haven't figured out how to do that. But I would love to do it. Like, take off on DCS World out of Nellis Air Force Base in the A-10. Fly out to the military operation area where they have the test range. Fly out there, drop a few GBUs. Come back to, to Nellis. Do an overhead break. Do it all under ATC. That would be super dope. Um, so, that's one of my, like, pilot edge goals is to do that. But, um... I'm not there yet. <laughs> I gotta figure the technical side out, and also gotta figure out the actual how do you talk? Like, what's the correct way to speak on the radio as a fighter jet? Um, it's kind of hard to find. Like, 
it's i mean there's so much information out there on how to talk to atc as a regular ifr flight flying an airliner or a business jet or flying vfr in a smaller plane there's so much knowledge out there for that but i have had a lot of trouble finding the exact same thing for military and helicopter because helicopter is very similar i think you basically fly, fly vfr in most cases and sometimes ifr with the helicopter so this thing is very similar terminology but it's a little different i think for takeoff and land like what do you say i'm taking off off the taxiway like i don't know what you request so i've been trying to find videos i think i found one of just like a guy who makes youtube videos who does helicopter flying Stop off 753 tower but uh, yeah if you guys know Stop let me know or send me a video or send me in the direction because um, the high performance group H145 is so much fun to fly, and I would love to take it out on Pilot Edge or Batsim and do a, a realistic like um, search and rescue mission, but on with ATC. Now, not the kind where ATC necessarily has to participate, but I would like to at least request, hey, I'm going to be in this area doing some low level flying um for this mission whatever like what do i what do i say <laughs> basically i don't know what to say yeah like I, I believe you can get like a hover taxi clearance given to you yeah so uh av8 is a helicopter pilot he could get some quick answers to those questions that'd be dope man that'd be dope i'm gonna check him out Okay, so the H, uh, sorry, the uh, the Honda Jet. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have been asking about the Honda Jet. Uh, to, I'm be honest with you guys, I don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, I know that it just came out. It's on the marketplace. So if you guys are interested in a light business jet, a, a very futuristic one, uh, one of the newest jets to ever come out. I think the Honda Jet is the newest business jet to come out. Um, it's available. So if you guys want to check it out, check it out. Let me know what your review is is of it. What do you think about it? Because I personally am not sold yet um and here's the thing as a content creator as a youtuber i i get the blessing and opportunity to review a lot of stuff some developers send them to me for free and that's great um but no matter if they send it to me for free or not it's my duty to you guys to give you my honest opinion about that thing um and i think i'm maybe even a, a, a bit more critical when it's not given to me because um like it's my own money I have to spend. I'm like, do I want to spend my own money on this thing? Do I like this thing enough? Do I know enough about this thing to spend my own money on it, right? And the thing about the Honda Jet is, I just don't know enough about it. Uh, so for me, honestly, I'm gonna be the kind of person who's gonna go out and watch some reviews myself from other creators that I like, and be like, all right, do they? How does it look for them? Does it look good? Do I think I'm gonna enjoy this plane? Do I, am I gonna only fly it one time to stream it? Am I gonna go back and review it myself? Uh, or am I going to be flying this plane all over the world? That's the kind of questions that I ask myself before I go and buy something. And I try to keep those questions in mind when I am given something as well. I'm like, hey, well, even though they gave this to me, for example, the MD-80. I wasn't given that, though. It's not a good example, I guess. Um, but for example, let's just say the MD-80 was given to me, which it wasn't. Um, oh, big freeze again. What is going on? Um, and it's $90. <laughs> right and so god's like is it worth 90 dollars?" i'm like i don't know i didn't pay for it but at the same time if i hadn't even given if it had not been given to me would i have bought this plane the answer is yes because i did buy it <laughs> um but at the same time am i happy that i bought it after i bought it and the answer is uh, i mean i wish it was cheaper but i probably still would have bought it at some point but if you're looking for a plane you're gonna fly all the time that's no, because I've flown that plane like two or three times, and that's it. Um, so in reality, it's not worth the money, the 90 bucks, because I've only flown it a couple of times. Now, if I was still flying it, fly, if I've had like 10 hours, 20 hours in that plane, 100% worth it. But I have like two hours in that plane. So um, right now, my status for the MD-80 is waiting for updates. I know they've already been updating. They've been doing a good job at that. But I'm waiting for them to come out with some mainly the sound stuff. Everything else is not that bad to me. I can deal with everything else. Mainly the sound uh, and even some of the texture quality of things is mainly what I'm waiting for. Um, for me to really enjoy oh, that aircraft. But the Honda Jet. I don't know. I don't I don't know much about it. I don't know about no, I don't know much about it in real life. I don't know much about it in the sim. Um, it looks pretty good from the trailer. But you can't always believe the trailers. 
so I don't know. I, I, as of right now, am I going to buy it? No. I'm not going to buy it Stop until I'm convinced Phoenix departure that it is good enough <laughs> um, for me to buy it. Tech Observer, welcome to the stream, man. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. We are today flying a Velo from Burbank to Red... Medford, Oregon. That's where we're going. And speaking of that, let me do what I promised to do, and that was show you guys the map. Where's my other view? I have another view that I like a lot. There it is. I like that view. Let me bring you guys the map over so you see where we're looking at, where we're going, where we're flying at. Mr. Sim Toolkit Pro. There it is. All right, right now you're looking at my, oh, my uh, load sheet. I'm going to go over to live map. Ultimate, welcome to the stream as well. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Yes, it is. This is a Velo Flight 111. Two-hour non-stop flight from Hollywood Burbank Airport to Rogue Valley. That is correct. Matter of fact, I think I took that off the of screen, didn't I? Let me bring that back up to the uh, flight overlay. There it is. So you guys can keep track on your own. All right. Since we'll get pro. All right, here. Okay, so we're over here. And I can actually, right now, you're, you're seeing, like, VATSIM traffic, all these green dots. I can actually turn off VATSIM. And now it's just me and all the SimToolKit Pro people. Turn off SimToolKit Pro, and now I'm all alone. And then we can switch over to Pilot Edge. There's probably not a lot of people. Yeah, we're just a few people out here. So we got someone flying out of Vegas. We got a few uh, GA planes out here. There's a lot of GA. Honestly, a lot of people use Pilot Edge for real world like like to get ready for real world flights like pilot edge is like a really good training platform see it's like nobody in northern area so the way that this set up too is like this area here i think like uh southern california i believe is the main area that pilot edge started out with that's like the cheapest um subscription you can get and when you get to all these extra areas out here you pay a little bit more see somebody's out here in oklahoma doing some flying together. You can actually use Pilot Edge to do just regular group flights. You don't have to fly within the Pilot Edge area. You can go wherever you want and still use a radio. You're just not going to be able to get ATC outside of the west side of the United States. Uh, but you can like tune in your own radio and talk to each other or pretend to be ATC. Anyway, so we're here. Uh, you can't see much because of all the rain that I don't see in the sim. Uh, but we're, oh, we're not too far from Fresno. There's Madeira. There's Monterey on the left. Uh, we're going to fly right over top of Modesto. And then here's Sacramento. That's our next waypoint. Continue north over Redding. And then over here to Medford. Which is just... Uh, it's in Oregon. Not, uh, it's pretty far. I was, <laughs> was going to say not far from Portland, but it's pretty far. For, but as far as places that you may recognize. Portland is just north of there, Eugene. If you're into American Truck Sim, you've been to all these cities before. So that's what we're doing today. We are 47 minutes out from our destination, cruising at 36,000 feet. And the weather doesn't look too bad throughout our route. But I'm not sure if Microsoft is going to match that. We'll have to see. Salvo 753, climb maintain flight level 230, contact Albuquerque Center 134.32. Yes, I am using live weather. That F-18 ain't run out of gas yet? <laughs> nice, man. Welcome back. Uh, were you asking, Kenny? Uh, what is my Sim Toolkit Pro friend code? Hold on, I'll find it and I'll drop it in the Public chat. Center, good morning. Southwest 753 is uh, 20.7 now, climbing 230. Oh, here it is. Alright, my friend Southwest code is in the Alpha chat. And three, two, one. Three, two, there zero, it is. Uh, do I prefer VATSIM or Pilot Edge? It depends on the mission. <laughs> it depends on what I'm doing. I mean, obviously, I don't have a choice if I'm flying in Europe. There's no pilot edge out there, so that's him it is. If I'm flying on the east coast of the United States, I have no choice. Um, there's no pilot edge out there. Um, if 
I could get the piloted experience everywhere else, yeah. I would prefer pilot because the thing I like about pilot edge, and I, I'm kind of I guess dodging the question because I, I can't really choose. I mean, I guess of course Vatsim because it has more coverage. We'll just I'll just say that because it has more coverage, I have to prefer Vatsim. But if I'm flying in the pilot edge area, um, then I prefer flying pilot edge um, because I get top to bottom. Exp like I don't have to be like I get ATC from clearance to center. It's not like I get ATC at ground and then. I go to tower and there's nobody on tower and I gotta use Unicom. You don't get that on Pilotage. Um, you also don't get controllers ghosting you <laughs> on Pilotage. They're gonna, they're guaranteed to be there because they're paid to be there. Um, unless you decide to do a flight outside of their work schedule, then you're not gonna get ATC. But like one thing that really bothers me about Vatsim, and I love Vatsim. This is not a, a anti-Vatsim stream. You, you see me fly Vatsim all the time. One thing I absolutely hate is when I get on, you know, Vatsim and, you know, for example, you know, Burbank Tower is online. I'm like, okay, dope, we have ATC in, in Burbank. And then, you know, I power up the engines, I got my ATC clearance, I'm ready to taxi, and then he just disappears. He's like, oh, I'm going to lunch. <laughs> I'm going to sleep or something. I'm going to play Call of Duty instead. Um, you don't get that on pilot They're going to be there no matter what. Oh, I like that question, Kyle. How long do I think it'll be until the fly-by-wire is better than Phoenix? I think it's going to be much sooner than we think. Much. Like, I'm, I was already trying to plan my streams for next week. And I'm considering putting fly-by-wire on the schedule. Yeah, already. I'm considering putting fly-by-wire on the schedule for next week to stream. So I haven't decided yet, but I know they came out with some new features in the EFB. They've added a few new things since Phoenix has come out. And I mean, both planes are great. They really are. Both planes are really, really good. So I don't think you can go wrong flying either one of them. So yeah, so we'll see. I, I haven't decided because I know Phoenix just got an update and I haven't got a chance to actually try it. So I might end up choosing to do the Phoenix just because there's an update that I haven't seen. But we'll see. No, you're not the only one that saw a fighter jet. There is indeed a fighter jet confirmed somewhere with us, escorting us. And also, um, just a reminder if you guys, if any of you are new to Flight Sim or have a friend that's new to Flight Sim, thanks to Thrustmaster, I have a 15% off promo code that is in the chat right now. For the T-Flight full kit that includes the joystick, the throttle, and the rudder pedals. Look at the bottom. That's a really cool livery. Yeah, that's really cool. One thing I... Oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot. This is a good time to do it. Uh, I don't know who made this livery, so I'm sorry for not shouting you out. I really am. But they've done such a good job. Look, you got all the stickers on here. This is actually, I think, I think this is the plane that flies to New Haven. So it has the North Haven, Spirit of the Havens <laughs> on there. All the stickers are pretty accurate. If you go up here, you can see the QR code. Follow us on Instagram. Free Ticket Tuesdays. Uh, I don't know what else is on here. That might be new. Yeah, but they did a really good job on this livery. There's like three or four different Avello liveries now available for the PMDG on Flight SimTO. And so far, this is my favorite. No offense to the other people who made theirs. I actually had a different one before. And then I found this one. I was like, oh, it has all the stickers on it. Does a QR code work? We'll try it out. If you're not watching on your phone, well, I'll use mine. Let's see. Stop moving around. <laughs> yep, it works. <laughs> it works. A Velo Air. That's hilarious.
Yeah, same for me, Shaq. The flying the fly by wire for me is going to come down uh, 116, to. 116, kind of go center, 132.905. 32905, uh, 116. Why can't I change? Oh, it froze. That's why. <laughs> why am I freezing? What is going on? What is causing my sim to freeze? And what did he say? 13295? I think that's what he said. Uh, just confirming. Now it's 13295. 3295. Thank you. All right, over there. Oakland Center, Villa 116. Calling Oakland Center is broken. Fly. Fly. Graphic. Is that the F 18 that we saw a second ago? Last calling Oakland Center, try again. Yeah, Oakland Center, Villa 116, flight level 360. Level 116, open center, thank you. All right, traffic's behind us. Oh, one thing, oh, I can't remember. Is it the Phoenix that does this? Or is the 7-3? I can't remember, and I don't want to say who does it. There is a traffic right there. That is a uh, United A320, A319, I think. So I can't, I think the Phoenix does it. I'm pretty confident, because I've been wanting to say... I could. I, I wanted to say it on my last podcast when we were talking to V1. By the way, check out episode 28 with V1 Simulations, Real World Airbus Pilot. Talked all about flight sim and the Phoenix and what he thought about it. And uh, we talked about a lot of really cool features with the plane. And one thing I forgot to mention that I noticed in one of my own flights off stream was, and I believe the Phoenix does it. I don't think the PNDG does it. But it kind of worried me at first. So basically, to keep this story short, um, why am I not in standard? Whenever we have traffic, same altitude coming at us, you'll hear traffic, traffic, right? Um, the audible tone. But also, if the aircraft gets within a certain amount, amount like distance of you, the A320, the Phoenix A320 will actually change altitude and avoid the traffic. For you guys have seen this in your own flying. But... Like, for example, we have these aircraft ahead of us. They're all in different altitudes. They're not a threat. This one might be an issue. The one at 400, 400 feet. Yeah, 400 feet below us. Um, but when traffic gets too close, the Phoenix will actually climb about 500 feet. And then once it gets clear of conflict, it'll descend back down to your cruise level all by itself. You ain't got to touch nothing. Um, and the only reason I'm able to actually even know, know that and test that is because I have AIG. So all these planes you see that are on our radar, these are not real people. These are all AI aircraft that AIG has generated based on real world flights that are going on in the world. And so there's aircraft flying around us going different areas, different destinations. And it's also generating traffic around us in our path and around our path. And again, we're gonna probably get a traffic warning here just a little bit from this guy off our left side. Let's see if we can spot him. But yeah, I love AIG. It's it's pretty hard on frames. It's a headache to get set up, but when you have it going, it's pretty cool. Contact LA Center one two four point six two. He should be at our ten o'clock. Actually, he should be nine now. Uh, give me that frequency again for Southwest seven fifty three. Southwest seven fifty three. LA Center one two four point six two. Take care. I don't All see. All right, twenty four sixty two for LA. Thanks, buddy. Catch you later. I don't see him. He's out there, though. Ouch. Uh, Fabio Wire does that, too? That's cool. Uh, Cosmo, how do I get the blurriness or depth of field or tilt shift shot? Um... To do that, you can do that here too. If I zoom in to my camera. Actually, I'm gonna do the easier thing first. So somebody was asking about the terrain radar. To so turn on the terrain radar, it's just right here. Oops, wrong way. Right here. T-E-R-R. Uh-oh. My mouse just break. Oh no, I think it did. No, that's not good. Okay, there we go. All right, this is working now. So right here, T E R R. You click that on, click it off. It'll it should say. Uh, oh shoot. 
My mouse is so sensitive. Sorry. Yeah, it should say T E R R in blue here, and now it'll start drawing the terrain around you. But yeah, that's the terrain. So that's to answer that question. And to answer the other question about the depth of field or the blurriness effect that I like to do is that one right there. That 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 look. Anyways, so the way you do that, and I've showed it before, but basically under camera, when you're in the showcase camera, you can click on and off drone focus mode to auto, and that, that does it right there. Now I have that, that um, map to my Xbox controller, so I can just do it on the fly without using my mouse. That's how you do it. Yeah, very detailed livery. The, whoever did it did a really good job. A really good job. I know I personally have always actually liked the Avella livery. Like I've never flown them in real life. I don't know much about them except for what I've seen online. But I've from just seeing their pictures on different websites and just seeing the delivery, like I really like, you know, that's kind of the thing that attracts me to airlines initially is usually the livery. That's the reason why I like JetBlue <laughs> because I've always liked the JetBlue livery. And I was just thinking about this yesterday. I was working at, at the airport and, um, you know, I work a lot of Frontier flights. And one of the things that I love about Frontier is that every plane is different. Every single plane has a different tail. Has a different animal in the tail or something like that and that's one thing i like about JetBlue as well is every plane i think most of them at least have variations of that tail it's not as like it's not an animal <laughs> but it's still pretty cool and i like it when airlines do that not a lot of airlines do that you know like united is a good airline but all the planes look exactly the same it's kind of boring delta's the same way boring american boring <laughs> easy jet usually boring you know uh so but it's cool to have an airline that that swaps them out it's i'm sure it probably costs a bit of money to do that but it's pretty dope can i reset the camera and then show you how to adjust it what do you mean exactly captain You know, I, I do too, Jeff. I wish you could map the dr drone speed to an axis. I haven't figured out how to do it, but if you do figure it out, let me know as soon as you do. That's something I would love because I'm always, especially when it comes, like when I'm in the air, I want it to be fast like this. So I can kind of go around the camera. I mean the plane. If I'm on the ground, I'm doing like a walk around. I want it to move a lot slower. So I have to go into my camera options and then go to drone speed and then, you know, adjust it. If I'm doing like a like a video where I'm trying to show a uh, entire airport, you don't want to go through the airport at like five miles an hour. You want to go fast. So I turn my drone speed up. I don't use drone follow mode much, but um, or no, yeah, I do. I do use drone follow, but no, I don't have a way to to do that. But what you can do is on your num on your numpad on your keyboard, if you click on the on five, it'll reset your drone. So if you ever get stuck or you're having issues or whatever, you just hit five. Like for example, I go over here, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. I do that, I hit five, reset it, <laughs> you know? Um, so it's super helpful. I'm flying an X Aero Mexico Southwest Airlines 737. Really, that's cool, Connor. How the heck did you know that? Like how do you, where does that information at? That's cool though. So this was an ex Aero Mexico slash Southwest Airlines 737 bought by a Velo, I assume, and now they fly it. So it's an old plane. <laughs> That's what you're saying. It's a real old plane. Yes, I believe five is the default keyboard command for that. I have not changed any of my default keyboard things. Yeah, it, there's a few really cool things you can do with the camera, but I wish they were more, they were easier to con customize and change. 
That's for sure. Right, how are we looking? How far out are we? How far are we from our top of the set? 169 miles. It still says 1830 Zulu. It's currently 1807. Uh, will I fly a Velo from New Haven? Not today. Um, do we have scenery for New Haven on Microsoft Flight Sim? Is that a scenery that exists? Let me search. Well, what's New Haven's thing? Is it KHVN? Oh, come on, Yahoo. I hate when my thing switches to Yahoo. Oh, wait, what is this? Oh, there is a scenery for New Haven. Buy on Sim Market by VREF Simulations for $10. But is it any good? Eh, it looks okay. Huh, do they really only have one terminal in New Haven? Or like one gate? Is there a free one? Can I find a free one? Orbix has a New Haven too? It might be the same people. It might be the same people. It's probably VREF selling their scenery in the Orbix store. So it's probably the same, same uh, team. We could make an aerobatic flight just with the camera movement. as 100% true, man. For sure. Thank you so much, Zebra uh, UK, for the subscription. Welcome to the Blue Arrow family. Welcome aboard. Hopefully you're having a good day so far. Uh, so far, it's pretty good, man. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I can't complain. It has been a very nice flight. It's good to be back on Pilot Edge. You know, it, it, until I... Pilot Edge, to me, is like working out. Now, now listen. Listen to me. Because I feel like Pilot Edge makes you better. That sim is good and it, and it can make you better in ways. But I feel like Pilot Edge really pushes you to be on your A game every time. And even when you do make mistakes, they correct you. And, and, and by being corrected, you get better. I know a lot of people don't like Vets or uh, Pilot Edge because they feel like they get yelled at and disrespected. And I'm not going to deny that because I'm sure it's definitely happened. I know it's happened to me. <laughs> uh, not disrespected, but just yelled at a few times from just me making mistakes and stuff like that. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like it just makes you better. And the same way of going to the gym and flexing your muscles, stretching your stretching yourself, stretching your knowledge. Uh, I feel like Pilotus does that to me on the aviation level. Uh, and when I get into Pilotus, I, I start flying on here, I want to fly on here more. And I really enjoy the experience that I get on here um, from takeoff to landing. Like, whenever I fly, a plane from point A to point B, especially IFR. Same thing with VFR. A to B, with no mistakes on the radio, I'm like, you know what? I'm ready to do this in real life. That's how I feel. That's the kind of satisfaction I get. It's a bit different. That's the kind of satisfaction I get from uh, doing a, a completing a flight on pilot edges. I feel like, you know what? I could have done this. I could have sat in the first officer seat of a real plane and, and f maybe not fly the fly physically, but I could have handled radio communication from A to B because that's the exact same type of communication you're gonna get in real life. Now VATSIM is similar and VATSIM is a very high standard as well. So if you're doing it on VATSIM, you're doing pretty good too. But I feel like pilot just takes it a little bit farther, just a little bit farther uh, in making it. And then also one thing that I really love is that like, as I look at my chart right now, I can look at my chart for Medford, Oregon, Med Med yeah, Medford, Oregon and these frequencies that are on my chart, these are the same char uh, frequencies that you would get if you were flying into the real Medford, Oregon. So like 121.8, that's the real thing. Unicom, 22.9 or 5. Seattle Center is 124.85. We might actually listen to them later on. Um, and so you have all that. It just kind of holds you to a higher standard and being more realistic. And I don't know, I, I, I personally just en enjoy that. So um, I wish it was cheaper, I'm not gonna lie. But at the same time, I understand there's people who are uh, who are paid to do this and sit there all day long controlling us, and they, they definitely deserve to get some kind of check, you know? But um, I enjoy it. And it's even more enjoyable when you have people flying with you. Uh, when are we flying, and are we doing a second leg? We are... It should say it on top of your screen, my friend. Let me see. We're 26 minutes out, and we're only doing one leg today. Level 116, descend at pilot's discretion, maintain flight level 240. Down the flight level 240, pilot's discretion. Level 116. 
Alright, 240. Top of the doesn't come for a while, but here's the thing. We don't have an arrival. And when we don't have arrivals, like a star, it kind of gets weird with Top of the Sins. So I, I wonder if we should just go ahead and descend early or not. Either way, I'm going to set my altitude to 24,000 feet. And then I think it's a good time to start briefing our arrival into Medford. We'll get the ATIS and all that stuff. Um, the ATIS is a 12725. I'm actually going to put that on COM2. We'll see if COM2 works. So 12725. And I'll leave that up. Uh, I'm not sure if that turned on, if I'll be able to hear it when it's ready. We're too far right now to hear the ATIS. I can still grab it electronically. That, that should work, right? I don't know. We'll see. I was grab it electronically. Get all that traffic ahead of us. Can we see that traffic? Other way, other way, bro. Other way. Thank you. And yeah, we should actually see it in a second. Uh, this seven three seven has a current registration of November seven eight three four Alpha. It was originally registered to X A H A M. Made its first flight on June 9th, two thousand four. Before it was delivered to Aero Mexico on June 29th. Nice. Rock City is in the house. What's up, my friend? You know, I was just thinking about you, Rock City, the other day, man. I was doing a flight for, uh, I think it was Delta Virtual or something. I flew into Dirt Detroit. And uh, they have a Rock City arrival. And I was like, oh, that's where you got the name from. <laughs> so, all right, let's go ahead and brief our arrival. Uh, let me see. I'm going to try to bring it up on the screen so we can look at it together if possible. Give me a second to get it up. Parasim, what's up, my friend? Pilot Edge or Vatsim, which would I recommend? It depends, man, what you're looking for, bro. It really depends. Kind of explained it earlier. If you're flying outside the U.S. or outside the West Coast of the U.S., uh, then Vatsim is obviously your only choice. Or, oh, I mean, you have Pos Poscon and IVAO, um, but yeah, it's, I'm not going to get the charts for you guys, sadly. It's uh, not working. I'll just have to read it to you. But um, if you're flying on the west coast of the U.S. and you're looking for the most realistic experience as possible, I'll recommend Pilot Edge. All right. So uh, what is what is the weather in Medford? Let's get it. Uh, what was my co-pilot in the chat? See if you can grab the METAR. Uh, in the chat, estimation mark KMFR. And yeah, I didn't know there was a New Haven available on uh, Microsoft Flight Sim. Pretty cool. So we'll have to look at that. Maybe next time we bring a Velo out, we'll take it to the East Coast and fly out of New Haven to somewhere. Now, Fort Lauderdale, what's that, two, two, two and a half hour flight? Might be a little longer, too long for one of my streams. But we'll have to look at what other. I think they go to Raleigh as well. We could probably do New Haven to Raleigh or something like that. I am going to grab the KMFR. All right, winds are variable at four. Visibility is 10. Clear. Uh, temperature is 22, 2.11. All temperature is 286. Arriving at the partner way is 14. Visual approaches are in use. Read back all remote assignments and hold short instructions. Devise initial contact. We have information Sierra. That is in Medford. So we have Sierra. Sierra is current. And the altimeter is 2986. That may change before we get there, but I'll go ahead and put it in anyways. And if we take, I mean, it is a visual. I want to, you know, I might take a look at this RNAV approach because it's, Medford is actually surrounded by mountains, which is the reason why I chose a flatter today. I was going to go to another place called uh, the Redding. Yeah, I was going to go to Redding, but Redding, I was like, eh, there's not as many mountains. I want to go somewhere that has a lot of mountains. Mountains sound fun. Uh, there's an RNF approach, but it's basically straight in. It's not too eventful. The ILS is just straight in. Not too eventful. What else we got in Medford? 
we might request something a little bit more tricky. Uh, how do you know this information, Sierra? Uh, Pilot Edge is a website has an ATIS thingy. You can go and search every IKO and it'll send you the ATIS for the airport. And uh, it has the Sierra everything. So it's not just a METAR. It's a, a, oh, this one looks fun. The RNAV RNP Zulu Berlin A14. That looks like a lot of fun. I think I want to fly that one. Have like an arc approach. You know I love my arc approaches. But we we'd have to like put that in the FMC and everything. So let's do this. How are we looking on our time? Are we at our top of the scent marker yet? 80 miles from it, so we got a little bit of time. Let's see. We can. It's gonna probably move our top of the scent up if we use this R now. Traffic. Uh oh. Traffic. Traffic. There he is. You see it? Oh my god, he's like right there. Fly. Fly. Yeah, we're gonna miss him just by barely. We might get into his wake turbulence though. Which is a big problem. Uh can I do a DCS F eighteen air to ground mission? You like those? Yeah, for sure. Is that Alaska? Yeah, I think that's Alaska. He got contrails too, that's really cool. Bruh, that is way too close. <laughs> that's the Embraer, a little Embraer. Alaskan Embraer. Yes, we are. So this Boeing, in real life, does Boeing, I guess, because I guess it's an Airbus thing where it, like, climbs for you instead. So I guess Boeing doesn't do that. How unsafe. Okay. So I like the way that this RNAV Zulu approach looks to me. I'm going to see if we can make some changes here. All right, going to FGS right now. How far off is that going to be to what we were already planning on doing? Actually, a couple of the waypoints are already in here. Papal, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do that. Le da -da -da -da, arrival. There's no stars, I know that. I want the Arnav Zulu. For one way one four. Is that not an option? Arnav Yankee, one four. That's the boring one. I got that one. We don't want the Yankee. We want the Zulu. Or I have Bravo. I don't have that one. That must be the one. Hmm. Hmm. I don't want to make this too tricky. I don't want to screw this up like we did when we flew in the Jackson Hole. Am I going to be around after the stream? I don't know. <laughs> it's a very busy week for me. I'm trying to catch up. Uh, how come I don't post stream schedules? Because I don't know the schedule. <laughs> That's why. I want to. I, I really liked having that so people knew what to expect for the whole week. And I, I want to bring it back, trust me. I'm going to do it as soon as I can, but... Um, I just like, for example, I just got my airport work schedule for next week, so now I know what days I'm going to be working at the airport, but I don't know the rest of my schedule for my other job. I have, you know, basically three jobs right now, um, this being one of them. And it is beautiful out here. Oh my god. I'm so distracted. So I want to do Zulu and I can't find Zulu. That's, that's, that's the conclusion. I want to do RNAV Zulu approach into Medford, but it does not give me an option for Zulu. I have RNAV Bravo. I don't know what the heck that means. That's got to be it, though. That's got to be it. That's got to be the one. If I click on it, what's going to happen? Let's see. Transition, check Sam. I'll know by the waypoints if it's what I like, if it's what I want. OED, and none of these waypoints are on this approach. None of them. Yeah, so this is not what we want. Erase. But I guess we gotta do the boring old ILS. Wah, wah. The boring old ILS. I mean, I, c I could manually put the points in for the RNAV and just fly it that way. We need to send, like, now.
Let's go ahead and descend. We'll do a manual descent down 24,000 feet. About 200,000 feet per minute. Turn to descend early. And the engines pulling back. I got three jobs. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so one thing that's interesting is there's a, it's also, you guys, don't forget, I'm also trying to get a house right now, like, actively, like, we're legit, like, we were supposed to close on the house that, you know, we're about to get into, the house is, is done being built, it's a brand new house, and it's a new build, it was finished being built, like, uh, halfway through last month, which was May, uh, we were supposed to close a couple weeks ago, and uh, been having some issues with the process, I'll just say that. <laughs> and, uh, and so we're trying to get things ironed out on there. I'll just say this, if when you work for yourself, it makes getting a house very difficult because like if I just had one job and I just worked for one company and I had a regular W-2, then we'd be in a house already most likely because everything would get approved. But when you work for yourself, you gotta like prove this and show that, and there's like so much more stuff they want to know and this and that, and it's just complicated. And um, I do want to say I was watching Captain Canada's stream before we started today, and I heard that he just uh, finally, I guess I'm not sure if he moved in or not, but I know he just got a new house or some land, which is a big deal, and he got that as a content creator, which as his main job, which I can't imagine how freaking difficult that was. <laughs> So big, you know, congrats to him. I'll definitely tell him that myself too when the stream is over. But I'm in a similar process right now, trying to get into my own home, me and my wife. So uh, definitely be thinking of us and praying for us on that. But everything's going to go, it's going to work out. I know it will. So we have a new close date, which is supposed to be halfway through June. Uh, so hopefully we're able to make that and I get to move into our new house slash my new studio. So definitely excited about it. But yeah, a lot of stuff going on. And um, just honestly, whenever I do go live, I'm thankful to go live. <laughs> so it's been very difficult for me to be consistent on my stream schedule, times, and things. But um, like I guess it, I'm gonna do my best to, to do that. Like, like 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 next week, I do actually have a schedule uh, for what I'm working, so I might be able to pull off what we're gonna do. But I gotta also, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'll try to bring it back. All right, we're just sitting for 24,000 feet. Uh, we're considering requesting the RNAV Zulu 14. Let me see. So we're going to Papel. Papel is on this arrival, or this, sorry, on this approach. After Papel is something else. Let me see. ILS. Apple, Kohler, and Sammy. I don't know where those waypoints are. I don't know where they're getting at from. Uh, yeah, it's a bug. It's a bug. That's supposed to be fixed. I saw in their their last forum post about the next update that this is supposed to be fixed on that one. Or maybe I'm not sure if they fixed it or not, but it's supposed to get fixed. So they, they're aware of it. Look how gorgeous it is out here. Man. So I think we're just taking... I'll say ILS is 111. 116, contact Seattle Center, 121.4. 1214. Available 116. Nice, that's one, two, uh, Seattle Center. Seattle Center of L116 is ascending past flight level 270 for 240. Level 116 at Seattle Center, Medford Altimeter 2986. Descend at pilot's discretion, maintain 14,000. Down to 14,000 at pilot's discretion of L116. All right, 14,000 feet. So this is what happens when you don't have an arrival. Um, 
the ATC will basically say, hey, whenever you're ready, you just descend down to these altitudes. So that's what we're doing. We have our terrain radar on, and this is actually a really good time to utilize these, uh, this right here. When I click on CTR a couple times, you'll see we have this guy. I have my terrain radar all turned on, so I should see any terrain that's in our area as we're descending. Now, I guess we'll just stick with this, guys. Uh, we need to be at 7,000 by Sammy. That's the end of the ILS, straight in from Medford. Uh, I don't want to do that. I really don't. I really don't. So screw it. We're going to do something different. Alright, I'm switching it up to script, guys. Alright, so Papel. We're going to do our old thing here. Next. Uh, Papel. To. How, what does that say? J. J I V T I. I think I can click here, right? Yeah, cool. And then from there, we're gonna go to Homab, Hotel, Oscar, Mike. So I'm manually putting in this arrival because it's not showing up as an option. And then Otsto, Oscar, Delta, Sierra, Tango, Oscar. Boom. And from there, we're going to go to Zopra. So we'll just hit Execute. And now I have continuity there. So I think I should, should be able to just like click here, right? And put that there. Yeah. I execute that. Now we got to get rid of a couple of these waypoints. I'm going to put this in the legs now. Actually, let's go ahead and let them know what we're planning on doing. Seattle Center, Avello 116. Uh, we have a request. Avello 116. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's too early, um, but we want to request the RNAV Zulu uh, into runway 14 in Medford if we can. I can take that request. Where did you want to begin? We'd we'll like to begin at Papel. It might be too high. Oh, maybe not. Papel is. 53 miles. Level 116 in that case. Uh, turn left heading 305, uh, and expect vectors Papel on the RNAV Zulu, only 14 approach, just going to maintain 14, 14,000. All right, down to 14,000, left heading 305, uh, and expect the um, RNAV Zulu from 14 in Medford, level 116. All right, heading select. We're still descending down for 14,000. We're going to speed up a little bit. And our speed is now in manual. We're going to go 300 knots even. And we'll throw some speed brakes out. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> All right, I got to do this right. I've never done this arrival before. We're trying something new. And now I can do the boring old ILS. I'm still going to put the ILS in for a backup in case we get lost somehow. Uh, which again, I was about to do before he called me. So 1103 here in the nav. This is where flying gets fun. <laughs> 1103 on both sides in case we things go horribly wrong. We need to go auto land. <laughs> All right, 1103, CRS is 143. Again, this is all for backup. We're passing 17,000. Um, the uh, we have information, Sierra, Sierra 2, 2986. Come on. Here we go, come out of standard. We're passing 16,000 feet now. And we'll switch back over to our regular thing. Oh yeah, that's why I want to get some outside looking at this stuff, because it's going to be a fun approach over these mountains. Gonna really be using the terrain radar a lot here. 
All right, so Papo's right here. He's vectoring us off a bit to the left because we're too high. Once we get to 14,000 feet, he may give us some more instructions. But I have RNAV Zulu. It starts at Papo. I'm trying to find out what the altitudes are here. One thing we have to brief as well is the missed approach in case we have to go missed. That's one thing I screwed up last time I flew on pilot edge was not looking at the the, um, the missed approach part. So I'm thinking we're probably going to want to be at least 5,700 feet at Papel. All right, here we are, 14K. The brakes can go away. Oh, look at that view. Yeah. This is the whole idea of a Velo Airlines, from what I understand. Look at the mountain in the background is most of their flights are to vacation destinations. It's not like typical flights to LAX, typical flights to JFK. They don't care about all the business travelers. Their focus is flying people to like vacation spots. And Medford, Oregon is a vacation spot. My question is, are we gonna get any turbulence over the mountains? Yes, I agree, Ted. The one time you don't read the missed approach is the time that you will, it will dev absolutely happen. <laughs> For sure. So that's why I want to pay you close attention to ours today, because I have a feeling we may end up using it. And I'm not very good at missed approaches, like flying them to the to the chart. And pilot edge is not going to say, all right, just vector to the left. Like, no, they'll be like, all right, fly a missed. So... I wish that my charts were working on my screen so I can show you guys what it looks like. But again, we're basically flying in to Medford from the west of the field over the mountains at 5,700 feet from Papel. From there, we're going to kind of do like a bit of an arc approach going around, descending into the final approach course at Zopra. We're going to be at 3,100. Again, airport elevation is... Uh, where is that? 1,335. Medford is kind of in like a little valley area between a lot of mountains. Not like, not as tight as like a, um, a Eagle County. It's not really like that, but it is pretty, it's, you'll definitely notice it as we fly in. If we do go missed, from what my chart is saying, we fly runway heading 143. Trying to find the rest of it. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so heading 143 for... 16, reduce speed 250, descend to maintain 12,000. 250, 12,000, Villa 116. Alright, 250, 12,000 feet. And descend. Villa 116, when you're able to proceed direct full contact cascade approach one two four point three one two four three all right we're able to direct to papal and we'll go over to one two four point three available one sixteen can we get the atus now all right we are able now so let's go jump over direct to Papel. Or I guess we... Uh, can I click on this? And click on it again? Yeah. Dope. Alright, LNAV. There we go. Uh, approach. Villa 116 is at 12,000. And we're fast. Villa 116, cascade approach. Shell temperature is 2986. Advice will be able 296, and we do have Sierra. Available 116. Available 116, Roger. Cross, Apple. 
at or above 8,000. Alright, cross path will add or above 8,000. Level 116. Level 116 cleared RNAV Zulu runway 14 approach. And clear RNAV Zulu 14 approach. Uh, at Avianca. At Vela 116. <laughs> I want to say Avianca. <laughs> All right, we're going direct to Pavel. Oh, it's about to get real interesting. I might not be able to look at chat because I got to pay attention. Let's do 9,000. Go ahead. 60R Bravo is a Cessna 172 slant golf at Minuteman Aviation with information Quebec. Oh, Request cool. EFR eastbound to Helena Regional with flight follow at 9,500. Right, lights coming on. About to dip below 10,000 feet. Five, six, zero, Bravo. I can get you out of our airspace, but Helen is non-radar. So once you get out of our airspace, no flight following services will be and available. And we'll check okay, down here. Frequency one two four point nine or Squawk zero six six two. We'll be landing flaps thirty. Squawk zero six six two and departure frequency one two four point nine for six zero Bravo. For six zero Bravo, back is correct. One two nine. Been a while since we landed in the mountains. Yes, seatbelt signs on. Yep, they're coming on. All right, so he's clear us for the approach. Uh, we want to pass Pathway at or above eight thousand. Uh, I'm gonna hit it at nine. I might hit it at right at eight. I might try to go for eight, actually. We'll see. I just kind of wanted to see. Right now, we're gonna we're scheduled to hit. Hit it right at. Oh, I don't think we forgot. The dual ground sky high five five. One thing we forgot. For taxi. Let's make an adjustment to our Number flight five, plan. Five, six, zero, so, Bravo, Roger, Apple, only one two taxi via Foxtrot Alpha. Jifty, Homab, one two via Foxtrot Alpha. After Oddsto, we need to hit Zopra. We don't want Kalar. And I don't have Zopra on here at all. That's great. Okay, so we got to input that. Let's go back to the route page. Uh, after odd still, we want Zope. Wait. OMAB, odd still. Yeah, so Zulu, Oscar, Papa, Romeo, Alpha. Alright, there's Papal. I'm gonna click here. There it is. Execute that. And then I wanna get rid of all of this stuff. I don't want any of that. I don't want any of that. So I'm gonna hit delete. Goodbye. Uh, we don't want Sammy. Delete. Good afternoon, Albuquerque Grand Allegiance three eighty three. It's a terminal with India radio taxi. Yeah, basically Zopra and straight in. It's three miles. It's gonna be three mile final at Zopra. Allegiance three eighty three, Albuquerque Grand Runway eight, taxi via Alpha. Runway A via Alpha, Allegiance three eighty three. There we go. All right, that's good. All right, cool. All right, you see a clear approach, so I guess I can keep descending. Go down to 4,700 or 5,000. And I'm going to slow down. I'm going to take this nice and slow. Nice and slow. Alright, man. Alright, airfield should be right over here. I can't see it because we're banking away from it. B check 200. Hold on. I'm gonna get slowed up way, way up. Alright, guys, we got one shot at this. No go arounds are accepted today. We gotta get it right in the first try. Uh, we do have a speed restriction of 180 knots coming up on this approach. So that would give better 170. Speed rates are out. Oh, it's gonna be tight. This is gonna be tight. Oh, it's gonna be so tight. 
Oh man, this is gonna be tough. We're high and fast. <laughs> Airport should be right over here. Yep, right there. You can see a, a plane over there right now. Let's keep descending down for 3,100. Harbor Creek Tower, Legion 3D3, home short runway. Tower. Legion 3D3, Albert Should be on 19.4. Runway A, clear for Clear for take off. I'm not going to be able to get a replay, I don't think, because I just don't have time to set it up. <laughs> Alright, here we go. This is, uh, what waypoint is this? Opsto. We're a bit high still. I might fly by hand the rest of the way. Level 116 contact, Schmedford Tower 119.4. 119.4, I have level 116. Ay, 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 it's gonna be really close. Uh, what's the go around? <laughs> the Medford Tower. Uh, level 116 is over Zopra on final runway 14. Maintain vertical speed. 16 Medford Tower, runway 14, clear to land, wind, the variable is 4. Clear to land, 14, clear to 116. Alright. My controls, Increase here descent. we come. This is going to be nasty. This is not going to be pretty. Gear is dropping. Other way, bro. Other way, bro. Adjust vertical speed. Come Adjust. on, gear. <laughs> clear of conflict. This does not look good, right? This does not look good. Auto throttle's off. We're actually just over the glide slope, except we're fast. Can I save it? That's the question. <laughs> Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. Legion 383 contact departure. My auto throttle still on? Legion 383, see ya. Harper departure, Legion 383, climbing via the Windsor 3, 6500. Legion 383, Albuquerque departure, terrain. auto contact. Too low, terrain. Putting it down, guys. We're putting it down. No reversers? Okay, there they are. They didn't believe in me. They didn't believe in me. <laughs> they didn't believe in me. But we did it, we made it. Whew. That was not pretty. That was fun, but not pretty. Alright, let's be Alpha 2. Level 116, right turn Alpha 2B terminals, and this frequency is fine. Alright, right turn Alpha to the terminal, and with you. Level 116. AM, and it's currently about. 71 degrees Fahrenheit. And flaps up. We made it. We really need that replay. We really needed that replay. Oh man. We needed it bad because. Alright, here's a terminal over there. I'm sorry. I really do apologize. I could not get the replay recorded. I just didn't have time. I just didn't have time. I right, want to take a gate this time. I think we deserve a gate spot. 
I didn't have time to do nothing. Like, it, it got busy fast. When we got to that first waypoint, it got busy fast. I would love to do that approach again. That was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. What's interesting is he brought me at 8,000. I feel like I should have been much lower than that. So I was really in a rush to get down to lose altitude. But, either way, guys, welcome to Medford, Oregon. That should be far enough. Break set. We made it. I didn't think we were going to make it either. I didn't believe myself either. I didn't believe. Oh, I'm so pissed, though. Though you need to catch replay. Landing rate, 213. Uh, I'm just going to have to watch it. I'm going to have to literally watch my stream back. <laughs> just, to, just to see what happened. Because it felt like we came in over the threshold of the good old 183 knots. That's what it looked like to me on my screen. I was like, oh, man. We coming in hot today. I right, shut the engines off. Since we can't watch replay anyway, it's not what it's intended to do. Let's get the APU on, though. Lights off and all that stuff. Five, five, six, here, yeah, I, I could have swore we hit that threshold about 180 one, two, knots. I know we touched down at like 160. Which is not okay. If you guys looked at our V speed, oh, we don't see it now, but our, our speed was supposed to be 129. Sheesh. Albuquerque 134.6, Allegiant 383. But did you die? Exactly, kid. We knew your shirt that says, but did you die? I like that. I'm a pilot, but did you die? Something like that. Uh, APU's firing up now. Maybe we'll shut the engines off. That was fun. That was really fun. Agent 383, My heart was beating fast. I ain't gonna lie. So we're parked at gate four here in Medford. As I promised, this scenery is really good. Freeware scenery from Medford, Oregon. Look at that, even has a statue over there of the F-16. Yes, this is completely free. Uh, link should be down in the description. Got solar panels he incorporated. Look at the view, look at the view from here. That's gorgeous. Captain, what's up, man? Thank you, bro. And your first full flight in a PNG 737. Congrats, bro. Congrats. How'd you like it, man? How'd you like it? There's a uh, Embraer on the way out, Alaska. Yeah, this would be a great place to fly GA as well. Any kind of plane. You can fly airliners here. You can fly GA here. Whatever you're into. Helicopter. I might bring my helicopter out here. Yeah, the area around is so nice. All right, APU's good. APU Jen's popping on. APU Bleed coming on. Uh, and it will shut the engines off. And I'll be done. We'll tie it down and get out of here. Again, I want to apologize. I really wish we could watch that replay. I think of all replays to watch, that was one of the ones we need to see again. Um, but, yeah. The, the way my replay is set up, because I use Flight Control Replay, and I still love it. I still recommend it. But, in order to get the replay started, you have to, it basically, you have to go, like, on a different window and open the replay program and save the replay and all that stuff like that and i don't have time to take my hands off the joystick or the yoke or take my attention away from this and go set the replay up it'd be the same if i was using microsoft um and so i just have time to get it going before we were landing because if i had done it we would have definitely had to go around and i said before we're not going around all right, pack's going to come off just because, I don't know, we're going to get air from the other ways. Uh, we don't have ground power set up yet. Uh, we do have a gate this time, so I don't know if that gate is animated, but we're about to find out now. Let's go back to menu. FS actions, ground services. We're six here, Bravo. Time around. Uh, we're going to get jetway. Over to departure, six here, Bravo. I believe if I just open the door, right, it should open the jetway. Or I guess I got to do the two-part Okay, uh, 5,000 for 9,500. Let's see if it'll come up. Five, five, six, yeah, here zero, Bravo. Okay, the parts, right Is that a contact. dark star? And the zoo off of there, three, zero, zero, three. Do I see a dark zero, star? Three, here, Uh, 
Uh, you had fun, Captain, but you had a problem with the altitude alarm. Yeah, it, it happens when you fly over a lot of terrain, so it just, you know, be, be aware of your altitude. How did you get turned around? <laughs> I really wish I had time to do a second leg, because I would love to fly out of here. This is a really cool airport. I want to come back here again. I really do. All right, we're going to get everything kind of like, you know, whatever, unloaded, and then we'll get out of here. But guys, thank you so much for coming out and chilling with us and uh, enjoying us, enjoying our flight today with Pilot Edge. It's been a long time since I've flown on Pilot Edge. We'll get the GPU connected, get the air conditioning unit connected, and uh, it's good to be back. It really is. It really is. Uh, I think after that approach, we need the labs done. Don't you agree? Yeah, I agree. Uh, fuel, not so much of an issue right now. We'll get the bags unloaded, though. And we'll get, uh, we don't need air stairs. We could just use it as is. But oh, the door is not open. Door. Open door. There we go. And FS actions, ground services. Uh, what do you got in here? Okay, now we should see that we can unboard passengers in a second. We'll bring out the loaders. All you guys can drive out here. <laughs> I put my word over the safety of passengers. It's word over SOP or ops, I should say. I don't know. Where did the jetway go? Come back. I need you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I don't know if the flaps were down. We came in, and I'm gonna re. I'm gonna rewind it back for you guys. The landings, which we can't watch it on replay. I'll just. I'll, I'll, I'll explain it. It came in 2,000 feet high, about 250 knots on our right base turn. Uh, we come in on our final fix, three miles. We're still doing, was it 100? No. I think we're still doing like 200 knots <laughs> at that point, three miles out. Uh, no flaps because the speed brakes are out. And I'm trying to get slowed down in order to put flaps out. Um, I start just kind of spamming the flat button. I'm like, all right, well, they'll come down when they're ready. <laughs> As we get close to the ground, I drop the gear about two miles away. I'm pointing the nose down. I aim at the at the runway, basically. I just point the, the yoke down, start aiming at the runway. I'm like, we're going down. And I'm like, maybe if I can get low enough, I can pull back up and start bleeding off speed. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, I don't know how it worked out, but it did. We made it. And we didn't even float. We didn't float, and we didn't bounce. I was expecting to get a bounce because we came in so fast, but we didn't bounce. So, other way, uh, you know, but the, the base of the moral of the story is, but did you die? And we didn't. We got here. We landed safely, as they always say. A landing you can walk away from is a good landing. That's what they say. But uh, we made it. I'm happy to be back. In the PNG 737, after a few weeks away flying fighter jets, um, happy back on pilot edge after a few months of being away, and uh, yeah, again tonight, guys, all in the blue experience flight sim aviation podcast. Me and XP will be talking with pilots themselves. Um, so if you want to learn more about the network and some of the events they have coming up. Uh, for example, they have a big Oshkosh event that they do every year where they have a huge fly-in into Oshkosh, Wisconsin. So much fun. I did it the last couple of years on X-Plane and on Microsoft Flight Sim. So I know they'll be talking about that as well, and I can't wait for that. I think it's coming up in July. But, um, yeah, come through, watch, listen to the podcast, and if you can't catch it live, you can always watch it later or watch it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Audible, all that good stuff. But, um... But what? <laughs> but did you die? What does it mean? But you didn't die, so you're okay. It's all good. Um, in reality, though, in all seriousness, we should have went around. Uh, it was an unstable approach. It was unsafe. Uh, and thank God we're in a simulator. So that's all I gotta say about that. Anyways, guys, it's been real. It's been fun. Uh, like I said, I gotta go. I wish we could do a second leg, but I can't. And um, we'll be back live. What is today? Thursday. Yeah, this is my last stream for the week. Sadly, um, I work all day tomorrow, and so I, I can't. I can't stream. I wish I could, but I can't stream. I don't stream on the weekends, so our next stream will most likely be Monday. 
um, and then uh, we'll go live I think again on Tuesday I believe so I think next week's be Monday Tuesday Thursday and then I work again on Friday so yeah that's the plan but Simo so thank you so much me shout out to our crew and the rest of you guys for um, participating in our flight our big shout out to our co-pilot Simo Simi so our lead flight attendant Ted our air marshal FS insane question mark and our gate agent Don Louie uh, for coming in with us and to the rest of you guys James thank you so much my friend thank you for the prayers for the homeowner experience has been a nightmare that's for sure but I know it's all gonna work out and I'm not worried about it um, it's gonna be all good and uh, sometime soon you'll see me with a different background behind me and you'll be like oh when it does happen seriously it's a big deal this is something that me and my wife have dreamed about and aimed for for a long time about getting our own house this is our first house in our name <laughs> uh, we'll ever have so it's a big deal and um, so if you see me with a different background just want you to know it's like it's massive it's massive so anyways captain thank you so much my friend for coming through uh, Anon thank you so much Connor thank you so much M Mehmet Salami thank you again for coming through hanging out with today Tech observer thank you for your expertise the watching eye in the sky as always I like this view right here. No? Let's see, I gotta get a better view. Go over here. I'm happy AIG actually worked the entire stream. Or, yeah, this is fine. This is good. This is good. And I'll turn it down. There we go. Now it's not so freaking loud. <laughs> there we go. All right. Cool, cool. Now we do the outro. Ooh, kid named Kenny, thank you again, my friend. Jeff L., thank you so much. Mr. Junior, thank you so much. I'm not sure who was in the F-18 escorting us, but thank you for your services. That hit me out of nowhere. Just slapped me in the face with that, that 808. Uh, Q Doom, thank you so much for chilling with us, my friend. Amechi, thank you, my man. Good luck to you as well, man, and your own, your own goals. And anyways, guys, until next time. Oh, wait, we got one more straggler. Thank you, Southwestern Railway fan. Shout out to you for that subscription. Welcome to the Blue Railway family. By the way, if you're into trains, massive update just came out on trains so well recently with the steam train. If you're into that kind of thing, check it out. I just posted a couple videos on it. But... Until next time, guys, remember, you have three choices. Give up, give in, and give it all. You got peace, love, and God bless you. I'll see you guys next time, next video. I'm all the way out. Peace. Herda.